life. She's right here. How's it going? Everybody waiting for people to fill in. So this is my kitty cat inherited from my mother. This is Molly. Say hi. Say hello. Say hi. Nobody's here yet. A couple people popping in. Hey. Let me give her some treats and then um, we'll talk about uh, some movies I've been watching. Who's in the room? I see one, one person's here. So I'm just wondering who that one person might be. I'll hang out for about an hour or so, probably. Uh, just chat. It's quarter to nine on the East Coast. So it's about 6.30 or 5.30 out West. We've got about five people here. Hey, Radio Demon, Alistair, Black Butterfly, AG Play, Lisa Pearl Black. Yeah, the room is filling up, isn't it? Molly's here. She wants treats. Hey, Hanlon. It's good to see you. This is just a hang. So if you're watching this later and you're like, man, he ain't said nothing. It's not for you. It's it's for the people that are hanging out with me. Hola. Um, but, you know, hopefully we'll... Hey, Alexander. Takashi Mandela. Wow. Okay, so we got our breakfast crew hanging out. Yeah, I said I'd get on around 8. What happened was I was watching... You can hear me okay, right? Um, I was watching The Color Purple. I was watching The Color Purple. And um, I fell asleep, so I can't give it a fair review. Here, eat this. Okay, now go sit down. Go somewhere. Go and folks is talking. Uh, okay, great, Alexander. Thank you. Um, so, uh, Color Purple, I always thought was like a... A down, depressing, and it's kind of like a down, depressing kind of movie, the original story, right? So to see people singing and dancing and chain gang dancing and all that kind of stuff, it kind of turned me off from the beginning. I wasn't a fan. Oh, people want to see you. Hang on. I'll get her in the shot. Um, superstars here. When am I going to DJ again? I can't because AI is so fast, it cuts off the videos. Uh, it, it doesn't it doesn't just block the, the videos, it, it cuts them off. So music is a no-no on YouTube. Now, if I go on Twitch, that's a different story. And I got to, and please put a thumb up. If I go on Twitch, that's a different story. But um, let me see if I can see these live chats. Okay, so, uh, que paso, hermano? Muy bien. E tu? <laughs> yeah, so uh, music, music's a no-no uh, on YouTube. We have to get over to Twitch. So you in church morning prayer last week. Okay. Well, what's church morning prayer? Is that a different um, channel? Tell me about it. I'll, I'll come to church tomorrow. Hit the like button. Yeah, Superstar, what is church morning prayer? Is that, um, hey, to Diva. It's good to see you, too. Everything's good. Just hanging out a little bit. I was, anybody see The Color Purple? Was it good? I started to watch it on HBO, and it felt, I fell asleep. Who are you? Can I tell, tell you a little bit about myself? Of course. I, I'm always happy to start that over. Do a free internet radio, but do video on there. Interesting. Well, I mean, you know, I guess uh, for my my take of color purple, the cinematography was beautiful. Um, the cast was great. I don't know if I personally needed a musical color purple. Uh, I will eventually buy it for the collection the archive, but uh, I probably have no intention of what, let me see, I probably won't watch it again. Um, let me see, somebody just said something that looked interesting. How's it going? What up? I'm good, Mandela. 
Hey, Alexander from Chicago. It's been raining night and day. It rained a little bit here, but it wasn't raining super crazy. Um, I'm building my hotel in Minecraft. Awesome. Check out Billy Carson when you can. I will. Uh, hey, real black fam. Let me get to the bottom of this. Uh, got some, you see my finger moving? That's me scrolling on the pad. Can I explain Bitcoin? I, I something I avoid. Do you still have that channel that shows those good old school movies? It, you're watching it. Yeah, scroll through, put in um, real black movies, and you'll see a whole bunch of people made playlists of the movies. Now, we took a lot of movies down because I just didn't want to have to deal with the copyright strike issues from the big corporations. So uh, most of the movies that are still on the channel are indies or old TV movies from the 70s that nobody really cares about. Nobody's coming after us. Uh, what do I say? You can make a person make a great decision about their health and wellness in our community. Wait, that's a good question. Let me, let me, wait, hang on. I, I'm having issues. Okay, there we go. What do I say? Wait, I'm trying to do this right. What do I say to get a person to make a great decision about their health and wellness? especially in our communities where my products are least consumed. Health is a serious cause. Um, Andrew. Mm, that's a good question. I mean, I, I, if you saw me the other day, I was very concerned about my health and wellness. Um, you know, I just, I'm at that age now where we cut it out. Um, I'm at that age now where, uh, I'm starting to see the effects of decisions I've made and habits I've had over the years and how it's not always um, caught up to me. Oh, Shirley Caesar, no, Shirley Chisholm, excuse me. Yeah, I want to see the Shirley movie about Regina King. I guess I can't this weekend. Um, you know, so what's your product, Andrew? I mean, what's what's your product? Tell me about your product. This is this is annoying. I can't keep the uh, thing. The original, the movie mis version was not good. Okay, that's what I felt. That's Elizabeth. That's what I felt with what I saw, but I didn't see enough of it to feel like I was um, fair enough to critique it. But I thought it was visually impressive, but. Um, it took a lot for granted. And, you know, I guess musicals do that. You know, do I need singing and dancing and spousal abuse? That's the question. Um, Molly's doing fine to answer your question. Yeah, something felt... Well, it did well on Broadway, so they're going to bring it into film. And I think a lot of people that would... Um, had missed the Broadway show or loved the Broadway show, want a film version of it. It's just um, something, uh, you know, the chain gang dancers was the part that I, I felt was like, and that's early on in the movie. Like I said, is this movie made for me? Is this, this is a little traumatic song dance spousal abuse okay yeah quote me on that one put that on the back of the uh blu-ray i have nothing for color purple and you know so then i switch over from color purple and i put on quiet on the set do people know what this is or quiet on set which is about all the abuse that happened behind the scenes at nickelodeon so Turned out, I mean, Keenan and Kel didn't show up, but I'm sure they had stories. The Nickelodeon documentary, yeah. Um, apparently, HR was very busy over at Nickelodeon. They had a they had a guy who was a dialogue coach who was um, seducing minors. And then the main guy that they talked about, who was an actor on head of the class, who became the mogul, he created a ton of shows. He ended up getting Me Too. What are my thoughts about 
it. I'm giving my take. Um, I saw the movie. I'm good watching that. Nothing else. Yeah, I think it's a, it might be a generational thing. Surprising is Fantasia one. I would have had Halle or Alan to New Black. Well, Fantasia was good. I mean, I have no problem with the casting. I think it's a beautiful production. I just don't know. Going back to Color Purple, um, I just don't know if it was my cup of tea. I'll leave it at that. Because, I mean, I, I met Blit, Blizzy Ambassador. I think he's a very talented filmmaker. Uh, Oprah, we don't want to say anything bad about Oprah anytime. And I just feel like it wasn't my cup of tea. And it put me to sleep. Oh, Frugalista, Frugalista is here. Hey. So if you're new to Real Black Lives, we got a lot of the old gang here tonight. I'm very happy to see the names. So now what happens is the chat is going to go off on its own and start having conversation among themselves because they haven't seen each other in a while. So allow for that, but I'll try and answer questions as they pop up. But what's frustrating me is like when I touch this, it does doesn't. Uh, do I like the original Call Purple? When I first saw it, I was too young not to like it. There weren't enough black movies and all this stuff. I'm not somebody I've seen it a thousand times like most people. Um, I thought it was well made, and then the critiques came in, and it raised it raised a big question. You know, should Steven Spiel was Steven Spielberg the right person to tell that story? And he probably wasn't, but he was the one that could get it made at the time. And then fast forward 30 years later, it's still Steven Spielberg making the film. But it's, um, well, no, Blitzy Ambassador made Barry of Kojo Wombat, which is another Netflix movie, but um, put out by Array. So... Um, Book of Book of Clarence is from the director of Harder They Fall. I understand I want to help the brothers and sisters. Well, DM me. I mean, it's just as simple as that. I don't have a way to get you on live. Uh, I didn't set it up this morning. Did I see the American Society of Magical Negroes? You know what? I was planning on going Thursday, and I should have, because it's virtually gone now. The only shows they split, they're on split bills, so they're only showing it twice a day instead of four times a day. Um, so I tried to go, I tried to go um, yesterday and I missed it. Oh no, no, yesterday I didn't go. Yesterday I wanted to go and Thursday I should have went. I wanted to see the American Society of Magical Negroes yesterday afternoon and I didn't. There were no shows playing. And then last night, we went to go see uh, Bruce Bruce at Punchline Philly, and he was really entertaining. Uh, I'd never seen Bruce Bruce perform before, and um, he put on a good show. And his opener was really good, too. Uh, I wish I could remember his name. I should have followed him. You know, I, should, I introduced myself to him yesterday, or I said I shook his hand. I should have gotten his Instagram because he was, he was really entertaining, too. Yeah, Bruce Bruce was good. Um, you know, he's 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 as raw he's 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 middle of the road raunchy. Like all his jokes are sex jokes. But uh, what happened to all the popular Dick Gregory videos he had uploaded? They're on Real Black too. If you Google Dick Gregory and Real Black, you'll find them there, uh, Mister Urban World. But they're they're on Real Black too. So what? And I'll, I'll explain that later. They demonetized this channel, so I had to move everything over to another channel in order to get uh, everything that I owned um, moved over to Red Black 2 for the most part. Did I see One Love, the Bob Marley biopic? Um, I did not see it. I was not really interested in it necessarily. I like jukebox musicals for the most part, but I'm such a Bob Marley fan. Do I have any Bob Marley stuff? I have a whole Bob Marley shelf on my... Um, in the other room, but I, I love me some Bob Marley and I didn't necessarily um, feel when I saw the trailer that the actor was representative of what I liked about Bob Marley, so. Um, oh, there's a clip missing that you're looking for. It's possible that everything didn't 
translate over there or to Real Black 2, but the main documentaries, the knowledge, wisdom, and understanding, they're all there in their entireties. Hey, 15185. Um, Bob Marley coffee. I haven't had Bob Marley coffee. Is it, does it get you high? Mm. I can share something here. Jamaican. I'm not a beer drinker. Hang on. Excuse me, Molly. But I try to keep stuff in the house, so. That's, that's Jamaican. Uh, let's see. Did I see the Little Richard documentary? Real Black actually helped helped on the Little Richard documentary. I, I think we got some credit. Um, the Mike Douglas clip comes from the Real Black archive. That's in the Little Richard documentary. And Lisa Cortez, who was the director of the piece, uh, did an interview with us to help promote the, the documentary. So, yes, I did see the the uh, Little Richard documentary. And um I'm trying to see more. More questions. This is okay. I'm learning. When wanting to try eggnog coffee this Christmas, I will. Interesting. Where do you find all the movies? Well, um, the first you have to understand. I worked at a video store for the majority of my youth, so I knew where a lot of stuff was. And then if you see Out of the Woods collection, a lot of it comes from Charles Woods archive. And then as the channel got more popular, we started to mine eBay to find certain things that were out of print, you know, so it became like a collective thing. The money that came in from the channel, we would reinvest in finding more rare things, you know, that, that weren't necessarily in the collection. But um, between Charles and I, we have... Um, we say 90, nine decades of study and love for African American film and culture. So it, it just was a thing. Are these LPs behind me? Um, LPs are on the floor. These are Blu rays uh, and DVDs for the most part. Uh, this is music. Oh, LPs on the wall. Some of them are, yeah. But the Boys in the Hood is a laser disc, and they're all signed, so that's why they're on the wall and not on the floor. Um, you know, so they become art once once you get a signature. Uh, thank you. This is one of the greatest coffee you'll ever taste. Business question: Any tips for me to expand my business, jewelry business, on the internet to reach? the black demographic. I think Mr. Urban World, I mean, I think one of the things you can make like YouTube shorts and Instagram shorts, and you'll be surprised at how much traction you can get um, on the shorts, like stuff that gets, uh, and TikTok. I did a TikTok video for Riverbend. It got 40,000 views in a week, which, and the same video on YouTube got like maybe 3,000 views or something like that, you know. So I think TikTok is the answer to help promote businesses like yours. Um, I'm trying to read. They disappear. Uh, how personal yourself to do it if you only have $1,000 to live with and your friends having hard times? Uh, some of your videos contain content that could have been seen as anti-Semitic. Uh, how do I respond to that? I, I feel like, yeah, they're, they're, you know, I, I defend the content as freedom of speech. I'm not endorsing or condemning any body's expression. A lot of the videos that are seen were made by mainstream entities like, you know, and YouTube allows it as long as there's a discussion around it, right? So 
Khalid Muhammad on the Donahue show. Now that's something he would never ever be allowed to even touch the Donahue show or a show like that today. But at the time, he's talking about race and and um, in a way that Donahue's being devil's advocate and challenging him on his perspective. Farrakhan, the same thing, you know. And I think that you know, for me personally. Um, I'm pro-black, you know, I'm not anti anything, but I'm definitely pro-black. And this is an empowerment channel and it's about putting information out there that helps people learn more about their history and their past. You know, so all of the stuff that you're talking about, the Hollywoodism um, was made by a major cable network, all that stuff. It's not me saying it, it's information that was archival and historic. We have taken a community guideline strike in the past for a cartoon. It was very frustrating to me. I thought it had historical significance, but somebody labeled it hate speech. I guess enough people complained in the chat that they took it down. So that that's the that was the that's the long and the short of it. So, you know, I'm not you know I'm I'm pro black, but I'm not anti anything. And if anybody has a problem, especially YouTube, it's their right to remove the stuff. But I'm not. You don't see me standing here, spouting off crap or even promoting it. This is stuff that's been up for almost ten years. No one said anything. If the political climate changes and they feel like they want to take that stuff down, then that, that's a form of censorship, in my opinion, and, and we're all for free speech. Um, let's see. I'm trying to read these things. Um, good afternoon. There's lots of channels doing music reactions. Would you consider doing the morning show again? Well, what happens is if I do it live, they release, they block they block the video automatically. They stop the feed and that, that started happening too frequently. So, and then the other thing Ebony and Locks, I'm teaching, it's taking a lot of time uh, cause I gotta read textbooks, I gotta watch movies, I gotta uh, grade papers. So I don't have the mornings free like I used to, or even like now I, I'm just so slightly caught up so I can jump on and, and hang out with you guys. Voyeur's here, hey Voyeur. Um, Khalid Muhammad was intense. Yes, he's very intense. He's he's straight coffee, no sugar, no cream. You know. Uh, have you watched the BMF, BMF TV series? It's really good and entertaining. I have not. I'm not. You know. Well, I haven't seen it, so I can't critique it. But power, power was good when I saw of it. But I just don't like shows that promote black people doing selling drugs and making profit and you know get rich or die trying i'm gonna have inventory pendants for people from names for, to cartoon characters i really think this is going to be a huge business I, hey look you you know you definitely should do it voyeurs here superstars here fuganglista is here the diva Charles is doing all right. I didn't have him come on. He's um, getting his place organized this weekend, so I didn't want to disrupt him with uh, the chat. But he'll be on. He'll be on one of these chats pretty soon. Uh, let's see. Does ever get tired watching black men as drug dealers on TV? That's my point. Yeah, I'm not really into the drug trade movies. Don Hughes spoke to some of the greatest people ever. Yes. Uh, that's why I enjoy movies like Blade, Black Panther, Hancock, that takes a different route. Good afternoon, okay. Uh, The Great Bernie Mac, Riverbend, that's a film I wish to see. Well, keep, stay tuned here. We're going to be doing some fundraising to get Riverbend out to Blu-ray soon. We're working on that really hard. Um, but I'm glad you discovered Riverbend. I'm sure you discovered it through us. Uh... Would you ever consider going live and we play a game about black trivia? That would be fun. I tried to get the black trivia game 
Angie, I wanted to do that. Like they had cards that you could buy on Amazon that were black trivia, but they were all like, the whole deck was based on Martin or the whole deck was based on Fresh Prince. They weren't. Like, it almost seems like Real Black has to create its own trivia game and build from it. But, yeah, we talked the other day about that, um, having a um, a game show, like a live game show, have people vet them, you know, in advance as contestants and then have them compete live on the air, you know. But, um, you know, do we do that on Real Black 1 or do we do that on Real Black 2? I don't know. Um Afro Soul's here. Hey, I missed you. I should have called you. Um, Bruce Bruce is in town this week. I went. I was at Bruce Bruce last night. You you would have loved it. Um, I mean, I know he's no Ali Sadiq, but Bruce Bruce was really good. Do you know the guys on Michelle Mission? Yeah, absolutely. I'm glad you know them. Um. I'm glad you know the Michelle. They've invited me to come on. I just don't know what movie I want to talk about. But they and they've covered so many movies. For those who don't know, the Michelle Mission, they come on live every Tuesday, and they're based out of Philly. And their mission is to review every black themed movie ever made. Right. So they come on. They talk for like two or three hours, and they review black movies like I think they just did Sounder or something to that effect recently. Uh call Cat Williams and see if you MC a show. Oh God, I, I would love if Cat Williams came on here on Real Black Two and monetized like he did for Club Shay Shay. He's he's a great guest and he's somebody I've never met. So I would love that. Um, pardon me while I get some red stripe but Friday after next. Yeah. We need a trivia. Somebody asked me uh, a trivia question to see if I can answer it. I believe your old interviews with Bob and Dick Gregory's were breaking the internet way before Club Shay Shay. Interest, introduce, well, the thing about Club Shay Shay, I mean, he got 40 million views on one interview. And he already had a big following. So that's millions of dollars that month into his account. You know, I mean, that's that's life altering. He, I don't know how he's gonna handle it in terms of, I mean, he's got money already, but I mean, you know, a big boost like that, a big spike like that, you gotta do something with the money, you know, besides bank it. You know, you gotta give back, in my opinion. You all right, Molly? Molly's nodding out. You know, the drug ep epidemic is so bad in cities like Philly. I saw these two people at the bus stop, and I, at first I'm coming up on them, and I thought they were like um, cripple or like old cripple people, and they were just nodding out. And the funny thing, it's not funny at all, but the weird thing about this, you know, what is it, fentanyl or whatever they're doing, is um, you won't fall down. It's like, was that weebles wobble, but they don't fall down? That's these two people, they were so stoned on this stuff and they were just going back and forth. Not to make fun of anybody, but it was, Molly was kind of nodding out. That's why I brought it up. You couldn't see her, but she was, she was in her state. I don't know if it was her. Weebles, weebles wobble. All right, she's back. What does ANC, uh, African, wait, ANC for, that's a good question. ANC with, uh, what does ANC stand for was the trivia question. African something Congress? African National Congress? I wasn't even in Kensington. That's the funny thing. I was just coming down, I was just coming down um, 7th Street at uh, Spring Garden. It wasn't, it wasn't the, they were just, maybe they were on their way to Kensington. Hey, Crystal. All right, weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. 
Uh, let's see. Where, all right. So again, if you're just tuning in, this is a live stream. If you're watching it on the replay, that's that's up to you. But we're just going through the chat. Yes, no, it's not funny. You're correct. It's not funny, but it it's funny when you pull up on it and you don't know what's going on and you see these people and they're just like, you know. I own American, Black Americans of Achievement game. When will you get another interview with someone of Dick Gregory's caliber? I don't know. Well, who's, who's a, Dick Gregory was sort of like lightning in a bottle. Um, I wanted Bobby Seal. I wanted Bobby Seal. And at a point I was ready to fly out to the Bay Area because I thought we had a relationship. And we, we kind of do. Bobby Seal is interesting because if you call him up, he'll talk to you for hours on the phone. But then at a certain point, he'll get very paranoid. He'll say, are you recording this? And I'll be like, no, sir. You know, it's like the reason I'm calling is to set up something formal so that you can share your wisdom with people. You help organize, you created the Black Panther Party. You help organize so many black people and, and empower them. This is what we stand for. And at the time I was talking to him, this was around 2018, 2019, um, the um, Black Lives Matter movement started. I said, a lot of their principles are the same principles that the Black Panther Party had. Hey, MG, I got your message. Um, I'm doing all right. So he just didn't want to do it. He, he had, I don't want to use the word delusion, but he had this belief that he could do everything himself. And um, still to this day, you know, I talked to him. This is March. I talked to him a couple months ago on the phone. And um, he still has this belief that he can have his own YouTube channel. And when he gets it up to a million views, it'll change the world. And I'm like, sir, I've got a YouTube channel that has a million subscribers. Just come on our platform and tell people about your platform and it'll help. He won't do it. He won't do it. But I mean, that was my, that was my thought process in terms of like, who can we get to follow up? Baba Dick, who would, who could sit, who would sit still long enough and have so much wisdom to impart that wasn't overexposed and wasn't co-opted by the mainstream. That's the biggest thing. If you if you think about why Dick Gregory's videos were important, he was not bought or bossed. You know, like so many people um, are bought by the mainstream. They're afraid to say anything controversial. And Baba Dick just didn't care. And I think um, Bobby Seale, if so, anybody can get him, if anybody can get them, I'm not saying he, anybody can get him. If anybody can get him before he transitions on, it would it would be a blessing because the man is so wise and he's gone through it all. You know, he knows what this is all about. So how do you get all those videos from a long time ago? We're just big collectors here. If you can see uh, in the back, I'm a big collector of stuff. Black Lives Matter was weird from the jump. They named their organization after a slogan. Have you spoken or interviewed Ruby Bridges? That's a good question. Um, I commend you for the respect you gave Baba Dick, although oftentimes he was irate. That's a good word, irate. Uh, voyeur, irate. What what other words can we make from irate? If independent filmmakers make movies, would you show them if it's good enough? There's no way to monetize them. That's the problem, you know. But if you have a short film and you want more exposure for it, sure, send it. Send it. I'll, I'll put it up. You know, if you just want exposure, 
but I've, I've got no way to monetize for you anymore. I used to pay money to people who submitted stuff. I, I'd send them a hundred bucks or 500 bucks, you know, for content, you know, but we just don't do that anymore. Um, Ivory Coast, Pearl Bailey, Mahaley Jackson, who gave the most to the people in what way? That's a good question. I just don't know enough about either Pearl Bailey or Mahalia Jackson. I would say Mahalia Jackson because she gave a lot to the people's spirits. You know, she she her voice lifted and empowered a lot of people. Trivia question on the television show Good Times. What was Lenny's occupation? I don't remember Lenny. Angie, does anybody have the answer to that? What happened to your movie? It's probably on Real Black 2, or the one I was working on, the one I was writing. Never finished it. And that's that's to my, my, I had four scripts I was working on, and I couldn't get through past page 30 on any of them. So, um, hence, I'm, I'm kind of in a sticking, I'm a holding pattern. You have to finish something in order to get it out there. Lenny was a booster. Okay. Mm. So tasty. Trying to get to there it goes. Lenny, if Lenny didn't have it, then they can't find any. Mad dog. No, it's red stripe. Uh let's see. Going back. Bobby Seale used to be at Temple. Yeah. But I met him, I met him 20 years ago, Bobby Seale. A great one, one of the best. African National Congress. Okay, so I did get it right. Okay. How many red stripes can I drink? Don't don't have me in a drinking contest on live. That'll get me in trouble, voyeur. I'm just I'm just relaxing, trying to. Who would you enjoy more, Mahalia Jackson or Pearl Bailey? That's, good. That's a better question. Uh, Mahalia Jackson, by far. Uh, all right. Patrice O'Neill. Yeah, Patrice O'Neill is great, Arnold. Let me not go back too far. We have 99 people in the room, and I'm scrolling. Let me not go back too far. We have some new questions here. And the cat's chilling, and it's very windy outside, I can tell. Um... Florida's Night, episode four. Yeah, so um, notification never came. Just happened to wake up 30 minutes late. No, I got on late. Um, oh, maybe maybe I have been on for a half an hour. Yeah, about a half an hour I've been on. Trick knowledge should be taught in HBCUs and black schools across America's curriculum. Somebody help us with that. We have three movies that are not on YouTube that we want to get into different curriculums. I... I'm teaching a variation on that technology in my race and ethnicity class, but I feel like more people need to discover um, the, this, uh, this uh, lessons that Charles Woods has in terms of technology and so on. No, MG, I thought I was gonna get on at eight o'clock. I didn't get on until about 8.35. How old was Gary Coleman when you, fir when you first started acting? Gary Coleman, he probably started when he was like eight. We had a Gary Coleman documentary, I think, on the channel, and they made us take it down. I think I had that, or it might have gone, it was something that was on eBay, one of those biographies, Annie biography things. Uh, we had Save the Children up for about a, a blip. Save the Children was on YouTube for... I posted it. Uh, it stayed up for about a month, and then Jesse Jackson's estate, Reverend Jesse Jackson's estate, took it down and and gave us a copyright strike. So I think the soundtrack might still be up, but um, you know I was I was pushing the limits at that point. Uh, you know I probably shouldn't have put it up at all, but. Uh, 
I gave people a chance. I think it got about 20,000 views before it went down. So if you, if you, if you happen to see it, then great. Good for you. If not, you'll have to wait for Jesse Jackson to get the legal stuff straight so that it can come out officially. But I mean, the quality I had was very poor and, you know, it's just proof of life for, for, uh, save the children. Uh, Gary Coleman probably was about five years old when he started acting, is my guess. Always sunny in Philadelphia, top five shows. It's been on forever. Jeez, it's like 20 years it's been on TV, right? He started on Different Strokes. I thought he did stuff before Different Strokes. I don't know. Do you watch Donald Glover's Atlanta series? I did watch some of them. I thought they were brilliant. Hey, Mike, it's a drug people are doing besides fentanyl. It's called Zalexine. And when it makes them together, it's really crazy. It makes their flesh rot. That's what makes them wobble. There before the grace of God go I, you know, Chico. I mean, I, you know, I'm not trying to make fun of anybody's addictions, but I just thought it was, um, you know, we got a new mayor here in Philadelphia and that's probably one of the biggest problems she has to deal with is that. Um, yeah, he was on Good Times and other shows. And same with uh, Todd Bridges. You know, he was he did a whole bunch of great stuff. I remember the show when I was growing up, you didn't see a lot of black kids on TV. Todd Bridges was on a show. Does everybody know the show that Todd Bridges was on before Different Strokes? I'll, I'll ask it that way. You know, people my age, he he was on a, a, the spinoff of Barney Miller, Little House on the Prairie, but he was a regular. They did a spinoff on Barney Miller called Alan Thick, No. Little House on the Prairie? No. Fish. And he was he was one of the adopted kids that Fish took in. And Todd was good. Yeah, it's crazy. Todd survived the entire cast. It's crazy because he had the most trouble, right? You would have thought he would have been gone. Thank you. They're, they're a good L. L. Brown remembers fish. Um, let me get these screen back up. Why Temple University won't fix the uptown there? That's a good question. I think the uptown is owned by... A, uh, another corporation and they're, they've been trying to raise the money themselves and that's what made it difficult, you know, because they wanted to keep it black owned, you know. Um, Ava Goda used to ride my bus. What is Ava Goda doing riding a bus? I would think he would be like in a pimp mobile. People can picture Ava Goda. Ava Goda looked the same at 56 that he did at 86. I read, yeah, Gary Coleman did pass away. He fell down some stairs. Or was, he may have been pushed down the stairs, they said. You know, he wasn't getting along with his wife and she's the one that discovered him. So there was a lot of people that um, felt that way. Julia, we had an episode of Julia on the channel. I don't know if it still is. Julia was good. Do you still post rare classic movies? I'm, I'm steering away from it. I just don't like waking up to copyright strikes and having to deal with that BS. So, um, you know, what's there is what's there. I'll put it that way. Um, you know, I'm not taking anything down anymore, but I'm not putting anything in more. Netflix has created an animated version of Good Times. The little preview I saw is full of stereotypes. Oh, it's depressing. That was, um, what's his face, um, Norman Lear, getting money on that. Documentary regarding the history of black nightlife in America and secret economic system that resulted from that. Well, if you have the footage, that'd be awesome. I mean, the biggest thing about documentary is the access and access to materials. So if, if people, People typically, they'll focus on one nightclub or something, and then they'll they'll do it that way. Um, animated version of Good Times. I saw the clip. Let me see if I can find it. Is my phone in my pocket? 
Currently a copy of Save the Children on YouTube right now in 11 parts. I wonder why they didn't get bust. Hmm. And I wonder if they got it from me. Um, da -da -da -da. I'm just looking for Good Times Animated. Good Times Netflix. Hmm. Okay, so they put this out two days ago, this trailer. Is that Bookman? Who's this big guy on the couch? They never had anybody that big in the original Good Times. What? Carl Jones, new on Netflix. Huh. Anyway. I, I probably won't watch it. I don't need it. You know, I don't... You know, I don't live in the projects. I don't need that. I thought we, I thought the goal was to get out of the projects every week. Like when, here's the thing I remember about good times is when, when they married, when she, um, she married Keith, the football player. And everybody thought, oh, wow, this is our ticket out of the projects. And then JJ, you know what happened, right? They get, they, they get married. And then JJ tries to get a photo and trips Keith during the wedding. And yeah, Keith messes up his leg and can't play football anymore. You know, that's that's when I, I was done with good times. It's like, you, you just want to find every excuse to keep these people poor. I didn't like that. What's well, JJ and Michael? Okay. What did you think of the Magical Negroes? I tried to go and it's already left. That's the problem, Greg. I was gonna go Thursday, I didn't go Thursday. And um, Friday, they split the screens. So it's, it's gonna probably play one more week and they'll be out of the theaters. So it was not a big enough hit. The PJs, yeah, I got the PJs. Oh, let me see. PJs were something else, hang on. Molly, you wanna take over for a minute? Take over for a minute. <laughs> You're funny. My favorites. That's what I saw. Prized possessions. What were you saying about her? She's a good host. Co-pilot. Yeah, it's already left. I mean, it, you know, it'll go to pay-per-view or something like that. What's What was on the shelf? Was... But these, these are hard to get now. PJs were fun. Oh, come on now. She's tearing up my hand. Um, yeah, I do have a good collection. I'm proud of my collection. Um, let's see. Jesus finger. Molly's chill. PJs was a great show. Baby's kids. Love Baby's kids too. I actually saw um Robin Harris perform live at the Apollo on a bill with Chris Rock back in the early 90s, like 1990, 89, 89, 90. Um, right before, after House Party broke. But he was so drunk, 
he did the, his Bebe's Kids bit before he did his HBO special, right? So, and he had these Bebe's Kids shirts that he was selling. And um, I mean, I'm I wouldn't have bought one if I bought one back then. It would probably it would be like a, you know, I, I wore a size extra large back in nineteen. 90 you know so i wouldn't be able to wear it now but i did see it, it pop up once on ebay that baby's kids shirt that robin harris used to sell but he was so drunk um and i was in the balcony i couldn't understand what he was saying um switching device to be able to see i'll speak didn't like the pjs i thought the pjs eddie murphy's a genius so even though it bothered me in some respects, I thought I thought it was brilliant in other respects, and it serves as a template for the Bernie Mac show. If you look at Bernie Mac show and what Larry Millmore does on the PJs, it's almost the same show. The show that got me was the cousin who offered James a job, paying a hundred dollars a day in Florida, was against it. <laughs> Yeah, every every episode they gotta end up back in the projects. Even I've said this before. Um, Sanford and Son, you know, you get a lottery ticket at the beginning of the episode, and somehow it gets shredded by the end. Or my favorite one on Sanford and Son is when they find the uh, blind mellow jelly records or something. And the guy, he shows, and he finds out that the records he has is worth a fortune. So he goes back and he's got, he's like, I'm blind, mellow jelly. I want my daddy's records. And of course, they get the records back and he's like, yeah, we're going to be rich. And then they fall off the back of the truck. And I'm like, of course, they're not going, they can't change the format. Um, damn, damn, damn. I just saw the episode where James passed away yesterday. Are you gonna watch the Tyson fight? <laughs> when is it that I mean it's it's who's gotta win, right? It's the it's white and black, it's Jake Paul and his fans and Tyson and his fans. It's a good matchup. I mean, I, I don't see how you lose to Tyson though. Like if you actually beat up Mike Tyson, then you're you're ruined for life. What what can you do? You've you've just destroyed everybody's perception. Is it really going to be a fight, or is it just like a um, like a, an exhibition? Like, I mean, what's at stake, and it, are they really going to go after each other? Who do I got? I got to go with Tyson. I'm a big Tyson fan, but I mean, I think you know, I mean, Tyson could destroy him, but I think you get in the ring, you never know what's going to happen. You just you just get one lucky shot and. Tyson, you've seen that happen before with Tyson. You know, if he didn't doesn't prepare properly. Plus, he what is he like 20, 30 years older than the other guy? So I like the San Francisco when Grady made Woody's extra. Oh yeah, that's classic. The girls are gonna beat Grady up. Yeah, I remember that. Normally, I saw, uh, stole the idea from a black man. Yeah, Eric Monty. Crazy, all those are better than the shows today. Um, yeah, well, there's too much shows. That's I think that's the problem. Um, there's too many shows, and they're not as well written. The writers aren't as good, for the most part. I mean, I think you get more... Well, Abbott Elementary is a good show, but, I mean, still, it's... The format's kind of rushed compared to... The 70s, and you had James L. Brooks making Mary Tyler Moore shows and things like that. You're not going to see anything to that level. It doesn't matter who does it. No, nothing's going to top, you know, that level of writing. Even like a WKRP in Cincinnati, I remember being a good sitcom for its time, you know, and that that was secondary i mean three's company was rerun wrong for snitching after you got caught taping the doobie that's stuck that's stuck in my mind coffin episode of the guns episode red fox can get married to rich lady faked a heart attack 
What's interesting about Sanford and Son to me is a lot of their story ideas and premises come right from Amos and Andy. And the same with Martin. Where's my Martin? I had it here uh, the other day. I don't see it. But um, Martin stole a lot of concepts from Amos and Andy and, and Sanford and Son as well. I mean, it's hard to maintain, what, 20, 30 episodes a year without being, um, you know, being totally original. Dee stole the show all the time, so did Shirley, yeah. Amos and Andy, yeah, a lot of episodes of Amos and Andy are, are very similar in premise to episodes of uh, Sanford and Son and similar to episodes of Martin. It's, it's almost the same show sometimes. Martin and Seinfeld are two best sitcoms ever, in my opinion. I wouldn't disagree. I mean, for their time. I mean, I would go... You got to include stuff from the 70s, though. Um, Mary Tyler Moore. Um, I Love Lucy going back that far. You know, there's there have been some good classic television. I would put them in the canon of classic television for sure. Sanford's son was lifted and flipped from step to and son. That's a good... Hey, Bob Cosmic. Good to see you. I like when Martin got beat up by Tommy Hearns. Oh, that's a classic. I saw that first run, the first night that was on. That had me rolling. Uh, what's my thoughts on Norman Lear and Bud Yorkin? I side with Eric Monty. He was a guest on the show. Anybody who talks about that, it's a result of the interview that we did with Eric Monty. He he had a stroke shortly after we did the interview. He doesn't talk about it anymore, really. So all the information that you get about that comes directly from Real Black. So I have to side with um, Nor uh, with uh, Eric Monty, Norman Lear. Definitely stole from him, and and he got ripped off. Now he he was entitled to more money. Unfortunately, he didn't get it. Or maybe maybe. The way the universe works, maybe not getting all that money saved Eric Monty's life because he definitely admits to having a drug habit. You know, if he had a hundred million dollars, I don't know if he would have survived it. It would have been quite tragic, possibly. You know, so. But I'm not to say that he deserves the fate that he ended up with living in a homeless shelter and all that other stuff. But, you know, sometimes the universe knows what to do and what not to do with people um, and money and how money is an, money's a form of energy in my opinion. So it's, it's part of the universal forces. What's happening? Welcome back, Cotter. That's my mama. That's my mama was only on for two seasons. How is that a classic? Flip Wilson show. Hey, SW, SJW4 all. Thank you. I appreciate the love. Yeah. I, uh, hey, Bob. Yeah. So, so we're just asking me anything. So if you're watching this live, good for you. If you're watching a repeat, it's probably not that entertaining because we're just congregating. Benson, that was a good one. That was, and Voyeur. Oh, okay. Somebody already mentioned it. What was Benson a spinoff of? You already answered soap is Benson. All right, you already know. Benson, Flip Wilson, cheek on the man. Um, okay, so if I name a show, can you name its spinoff? Ready? All right, so if I if I name Mama's Family is a spinoff of what show? Mama's Family is a spinoff of what show? Who's got that? I'm waiting, Afroson. Maybe, maybe not. Carol Burnett. Geechee Dan gets it. Yay. You watched Laughing. Laughing is a tough. Carol Burnett. Everybody's got that one. Okay. Um. 
what's another one from the 70s or 60s? So Spinoffs. Um, everybody, everybody's got Carol Burnett. Yay. Oh, All in the Family. Name a spinoff from All in the Family. So <laughs> Alice. Alice is a spinoff of the Jeffersons. Very good, Voyeur. The Jeffersons. Okay. Alice is a spinoff of what motion picture? Alice is a sitcom remake of what motion picture? Okay, Archie's Place. That's a good one, too. Mel's Diner. Kiss my Chris. Hey, Chris. Okay, all right. I'm waiting for it to come up. There was a movie... Born in 79. Alice doesn't live here. Very good. So then you say, um, what movie inspires what's happening? What's happening is a spinoff of what movie? Three's Company, no. Maud, yeah, Maud is part of, um, that galaxy of uh, all in the family spun. Cooley High, very good. Everybody's got that one. Uh, what what show? I'm trying to. It has the same title. That's why. What what cable TV classic is a spinoff? of a popular 90s black cast movie. They have the same title. That might be vague. I think Boris Kojo was in it. Soul Food, very good. Elizabeth, yes. There you go, good. Everybody's... You guys are better than my students. My students don't know any of the stuff. They were born like 2,000. Eight is enough. Where's, I'm not sure what that means. <laughs> MG, all right. MG's of the age where she can just say whatever she wants and there's no repercussions. <laughs> Thank you, Celine. Um, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think more recently. Oh, um, spinoff of Cheers. Spinoff of Cheers would be Coach, no. Taxi, no. Frazier, very good. FU2 and V-Man 0966. Um... Seinfeld, Frazier, Frazier. Everybody's got Frazier now. Becker. Becker. I think you're right about Becker. Was Becker part of Frazier's universe? I forgot about Becker. Does that still come on? Do people still watch Becker? Is Becker still on like a streamer or something like that? I No. Maud is a spinoff of Archie Bunker. Mind your language. Huggy Bear had a backdoor spinoff on Starsky and Hutch. Yeah, it didn't get picked up, though. Cheers was a spinoff of Becker? No. Becker comes after Cheers. Frasier. Frasier is a spinoff. Vice versa. Okay. We're just hanging out. All right. Somebody asked me when Wings. Oh, gosh. <laughs> Forgot about Wings. That's an old one. Cozy TV. I believe Becker. Wish you had the Shaft TV show. What's interesting, you can get all the episodes from Warner Archive, but I think the Shaft, I don't I don't think it's here. There's a lot of Shaft here. Let me see what's here. These these are criterions. Um Nothing interesting. I'll let you read them. 
nothing interesting there. Um, but I think the shaft, one of the shafts has the episodes. Girlfriends, that's a good one. Three and a Half Men was a great show. I think Three and a Half Men was be the beginning of the dumbing down. I mean, not to say that shows like Three's Company weren't in a similar vein, but but um, I think the thing about Three and a Half Men is it was just good enough to be entertaining, but not so good that you had to make an appointment to watch it, you know? Like, if you fell asleep on uh, Two and a Half Men, you didn't feel bad the next morning. Like, oh, like if you missed the wire, you know what I mean? Hey, Simply Deep 1985, spin off of Sanford Son. Oh, that's a good question, yeah. So that's a good question, let, let other people answer. I know the answer to that one. What's a spin off of Sanford and Son? There were two, Grady, and there's another one. There's another spinoff of Sanford and Son. Sanford, that's one, yeah. Sanford Arms. Sanford Arms. There you go. Rob Oaks got it. With Dennis Berkeley as Lamont. I guess Lamont left or they didn't want to pay Lamont, so they got this big, heavy, white dude. I think there might have been a show called Sanford as well with... Um, Oh, Mork and Mindy, yeah, that's a that's a spinoff of uh what Happy Days, right? And um Happy Days is a spin-off of what show? Happy Days is a spin-off of another show. No. I'm, this one this might take it a little further. Lorenz Tate on Sanford Arms. I don't remember that. <laughs> Lamar with the pen. Not American. It's inspired by American Graffiti. Close. Well, sim Well, yeah. I guess Richie was in American Graffiti, and not that might have helped influence it. But um, love American style. Love American style had a episode called Love and the Happy Day. And that was the um, the backdoor pilot for Happy Days. Can't believe you know, okay, no Tyler Perry was. It was well they're not film students at all. I would never got that. Of course Vinny Barbarino. Well welcome back Cotter was inspired by an album. I had the album here a while ago. Let me see. Let's see if I can get cool points. Hang on. Molly, take over. There's Molly. Look, I'm trying I'm trying for cool points. If I can figure this out. I got so much trouble on my mind.
chilling? What did I miss in the chat? Got some vinyl here. <laughs> Chat's moving. Okay, we lost about 10 people. I couldn't find it. Uh, I thought it was in here, but I don't know where it is. Um, but I found some other vinyl. Uh, Gabe Kaplan had an album called Holes and Mellow Rolls on ABC Records, and it was the inspiration for Welcome Back, Cotter. But here's some stuff. Um, yeah, Molly's snacked out for sure. She's, it's, it's been cold here lately. It's been cold here lately. She's been hanging out a lot more than she usually does. Um, room 222 and 227. Uh, Chips was a good show. Yeah, I watched Chips. I watched... Uh, all right, now dating myself. BJ and the Bear. BJ and the Bear. And then... Um, when CBs were, CB was like a big thing. And then they had the same thing in a movie with Clint Eastwood. Oh, Afro would like this one. Yeah, we play this. We used to play this in the mornings, didn't we? It was a promo copy. I wonder if it's worth anything. It's pretty clean. Shiny. Yeah. Spun off with different strokes was um oh that's a good one, yeah. What what spin off of different strokes was there? That's a very good question. Or did you already answer it? Did anybody answer that? That what was what shows spun off from different strokes? The Ropers, not the Ropers. Facts of Life, there you go. Perfect. Jive Arista. Uh, no, this is... Uh, it is Arista, yeah. Arista Records, no, not Jive, though. Just plain Arista. Let me clean this, straighten this out. Um, Lyric Sheet. That might be a nice photo to put up on Instagram. This is the kind of thing you don't get with a CD or a MP3 download. Lyric sheets, in, inside photos. I gotta figure out how to put this back in so it doesn't fall out. Uh. No, Jive Arista was, um, RCA Jive was Tribe Called Quest and, um, Jazzy Jeff and the Fresh Prince. There's a video on the channel called Jive's Greatest Something. It's got all the rap artists. Here's one. Let me take you back. Oh, this is not my original copy. Either. This is... Who's the boss? This fit. Well, people were skinny back then. So this has daddy's home, right? Oh, we could just do hairstyles, huh? Gumby's, afros. This is a reissue, classic. I think Eugene McDaniels, he might have just passed away. Headless Heroes. Yeah. 
Erica Estrada, people forget Jermaine at one point was bigger than Mike. Was he? I, I, I can't imagine that. Michael Jackson had all the hits. This this I just pulled out. It's, it's not sealed. I gotta put this on the channel. So we'll set that one aside. Transcribe it. This feels heavy. There might be something in here. You can't get a copy of uh, Purple Rain for three ninety nine anymore. Prince. It feels heavy. I'm going to open it up and see if there's something in here. Hype sticker. I bought it in March 1989. I wrote the date on it. What's this? Do people still have this? Let's see. I'm reading the cover. American Jazz. I didn't put the American Dream up. No. But if it's on YouTube, I mean, I have it, but. I guess I can get some money for this. So, all right, who can name all the members of the revolution? I thought there might be a, a single in here. When Doves Cry. Yeah, I didn't. Oh, it's a cutout. Interesting. That's why it was $3.99. I didn't get it new. I was one of the last to buy it. It was a cutout. Lort. <laughs> Let's go crazy. Darling Nikki. Computer Blue. Oh, I might have to listen to this tonight. Wendy, Lisa, the doctor. Yeah. Wendy, Lisa, Daz. Dr. Frank, Jesse Jackson. Okay, I think you might have gotten it. Geechee Dan, name the revol members of the revolution. So, uh, they don't tell you. Love the late 60s. Should I pull more vinyl or are we talking Michael Jackson now? Oh, I, I can show you another uh, Prince item sitting over here. Purple Rain Jesse was with the time. I was a young and humping pillow sound. <laughs> I can't, I can't read. Hang on, take over, Molly. Whoops. Prince. We're talking about Prince, right? Ah, uh, let's go crazy. Jackson. I'm just looking for print stuff. This isn't, none of this is really rare, in my opinion. But He's like, what are you doing? What are you doing? More stay. I don't have more stay. Oh, real black hoodies are still on sale. 
ever hear the solo Jackie Jackson album? I have it somewhere. It's not that good. <laughs> I'm just wondering where Tito is. Here's the other. So this, this, everybody I know that has this, it's rusted on them. Oh, Neil's here? Hey, Neil. Doesn't. Oh, geez, the moisture. I can't open this, it's crackling. Same thing happened to my Paul's Boutique album, it was, it got wet, or exposed to moisture, and got messed up. Hey, Molly's up. Tito, give me some tissue, Jermaine. Stop teasing me. Oh, it's a seal. Uh, at times. Yeah, Cr uh, Chris, did you like the Tito album? Prince collection. This Blu-ray, it has all three of his movies. Under Graffiti Bridge, under the, I'm sorry, Graffiti Bridge, Under the Cherry Moon, and Purple Rain. So this is the way to go if you like Prince and you like his movies. Um, black album on CD. It's like a mirror. Remember when this first came out, it was a big deal. Tito was cool, and Stoney was my favorite Jackson. Oh, you're being, you're being funny. Bob George. Yeah, so that's... The only Prince album not available on streaming. Where can I get the color version of Under the Cherry Moon? I don't know if one exists. Um, I think they shot it in black and white. So. I think it was shot. It's a good question. Um, was it Under the Cherry Moon? Was it, I mean, there's enough Prince fanatics out there. Was it shot in color and then the color taken out? I don't think so. I think it was all shot in black and white. Hey, Neil, no, am I missing? Neil said something? No. Never, there is no Tito album. I was just joking. I want to be your lover. Okay. Scandalous is from Batman. At one point, we had this whole scandalous 12-inch uh, on the channel, but it, got a, it caught a strike after a while. But he did a 12-inch with... Um, Homegirl, Vicky Vale. What's her name? Somebody help me. Blonde, blonde actress who played Vicky Vale. Uh, Larry Graham. This is kind of rare. I haven't listened to this yet, to be honest with you. Yeah, the scandalous love suite or whatever. Should I pull more stuff? She's hot. Yeah, what's her name? Kim Bassinger, thank you. Kim Bassinger, yeah. So the rumor was they had an affair and they were in the recording booth and she was making all kinds of coo oohs and ahs, you know, on the vinyl, you know. So good for Prince. Prince, you know, had a great life. I, I miss him. What's down here? Molly, what, what else do you want to show him? I'm gonna show more stuff. Dreamt about Jenks last night. Okay, I'm a Jenks kid. Wellington. Somebody who knows me from grade school watching. Wreck Stowe. Yeah, 
Let me see what's here. Oh, I don't know. I'm listening. Trying, trying to keep you guys company. What's, what's been new? So, if you just tuned in, people popping in and out. So, if you just tuned in, I, I said I tried to watch the color purple. Couldn't get through it. I fell asleep. Probably needed that coffee or something to get through it. But it just threw me off from the beginning. There was a lot of um, dancing. It just, it just felt weird. Dancing prisoners and dancing sharecroppers and shit like that was not something I was expecting at the beginning. It didn't excite me, so I, I had to pass on it. And then um, I watched The Quiet on set, and that was that held my interest, you know. But I didn't grow up on Nickelodeon. It's awful to hear how little HR they had, you know, in terms of uh, protecting these kids. How many have come out traumatized as a result of their early stardom and all that kind of stuff. I thought it was really well done. And um, I guess there's going to be more episodes coming, you know, but or maybe not because they, they kind of close on Dan getting fired. So maybe the whole series has dropped. Anybody actually like the new Color Purple a lot of people liked it that saw it in the theater. I just wasn't a fan. I can't say it's one I'm going to rush out to buy. But, um... Oh, here's what I considered. In your opinion, what's Spike Lee's worst film? Spike Lee's worst film. You should interview Keanu Reeves. What would I say to Keanu Reeves? I don't even know. I'm, you know, are you into African music? Do I have any in your collection? I when I went to Africa, I, I, I went to Senegal when I was in college. Oh, she hate me, girl six. Yeah, yeah. Um, Real Black Two. But I'm not putting enough stuff on Real Black Two. I mean, Real Black One is definitely shadow banned. Forget about it. I mean. Million subscribers. We only got eighty-seven people watching. That that to me is doesn't add up, you know. But I'm happy that you're here. She hate me. Do the right thing. What are your thoughts on um, Five Bloods? Just trying to see what's here. Oh, here's a classic. I might play that later. It'd be nice to listen to it on vinyl. Hated the ending of Do the Right Thing. Y'all hating on Morris Blackman. Chirac. Oh, God. Yeah, I forgot about Chirac. Yeah, I forgot about Chirac. Did Chirac... Chirac was made for Amazon. That never made it to physical media, did it? There's no DVD or Blu-ray of Chirac. Oh, wait, maybe there is. Do I own Chirac? That's a forgettable one, in my opinion. I mean, he was trying to do the right thing with uh, with the message. It was an adaptation. But, uh, yeah, I do have Chirac on DVD. White Men Can't Jump. That's, oh, the TV show or the movie? I haven't seen, I've not seen the TV show yet. 95 million to make Color Purple Musical. It's a beautiful film. It's a beautiful film. Pam Greer movies. Uh, the first two are the best, in my opinion. Coffee and Foxy Brown. That's where, that's where I would go with Pam Greer. But um, she made a lot of good stuff. I mean, I, I enjoy, that could be, did anybody do like a video tribute to Pam, Pam Greer? She deserves one. Let's see what's over here. Ah, Chris is going to appreciate this one. Whoa. I just destroyed something. To 
just going through the record collection. Ooh, that wasn't good. <laughs> that wasn't good at all. Yikes. This is bad. This is bad. I was trying to get to... I'll get to your sign up. This I could probably get on the channel. This is Lionsgate, though. This never made it to anything. And it's uh, got a good cast. I might have to put this on. Let's see. Who owns it? Let's do some research. Let's see who owns this thing. Yeah, it's Lisa Bonet. Forrest Whitaker and Judd Nelson, Judd Reinhold, excuse me, Patrick Dempsey. Yeah, it's a bad cover. I guess they wanted to show her. I'll have to dig it out. Let's see. I mean, this is when when Forrest Whitaker was still kind of struggling a little bit. Um, he was in between hits. And things are going straight to video. So Bank Robber is one of those movies. He he did another one. Mm. Charles knows the name of it. Uh, it was really good too. He Charles had a copy of it. Um, I gotta look it up. Unless it's over here. I fell in love with her when she was in a different world. Mm. These, oh, interesting. Oh, wow. This is rare. This is something Ava distributed. I'll have to frame this. This is when I first met Ava DuVernay. She had this company, Forward Movement Films. And she did a guest lecture in Seattle. And uh, this is, this was her sign-in sheet kind of thing. So that's about 12 years old. Um, age of Chance. It's like high school, British import. But they did a cover of Kiss that was good. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, don't get mad, get even. Uh, Crush Collision. Yeah, they did a cover of Kiss. That's pretty cool. I think I played it once on um, when we were doing lives. Uh, it's a Prince bootleg. There were a lot of Prince bootlegs back in the day. Um, I have to dig this. I have to listen to this. I'm not sure what's on it. Ava was gorgeous. Yes, yeah, she was. Chicago Soul Train. There are no recordings of Chicago Soul Train, Chris. So how can you compare them? They they never recorded those early Soul Trains. Charles, hey, Reef. Charles is doing great. Looks like before High Fidelity. With Jamie. Oh, here's one. You can't get vinyl for seven dollars anymore, which is unfortunate. People, people have this. I had the cassette bootleg, and I had to go out and get the vinyl. This is a great album. I I don't think enough people listen to this anymore. I might have to put this one on. Poor Righteous Teachers. Oh, it says, oh. Mm. This was disappointing when I first got it. Cause the, I think the version of Do What You Like is different than the one that they played on the radio or something like that. 
like Humpty Dance is the same record, but I think Do What You Like is different. And you know the other album, the other album that's like that. I don't have that here. I don't think. Um, There's Tupac. I did see the Thriller 40 documentary. I thought it was good. I mean, I like Nelson George. I think Spike Lee would have made a better film. But, um... Oh, wait, I, I'm not holding it upright. Chris is like, you're not holding it upright. So this this was part of the this thing. If people don't remember, underneath the wheel of his Jeep is a Kangol cap. He's wearing a Kangol, but he's got LL Cool J's Kangol underneath the Jeep, right? And... Uh, Kumo D, I'll ask the trivia. This is Kumo D's first album, right? What group was he a part of before he went solo? What group was Kumo D in? Where's LL now? Oh, I think LL did all right for himself. So 12, 12 inch stuff then. Treasures three, very good. Thank you. Bob and Chris nailed it. So at one point, oh, this is a public enemy 12 inch. What's what's on it? Prophets of Rage. Power version. And then what's on the flip? These guys were so innovative. When they first came out with them, they because they had the, the one-sided die cut and then the Def Jam on the back, they would say this side, that side. Oh, this is Don't Believe the Hype, The Rhythm, The Rebel. I might have to give this a play. Um, the A side is Don't Believe the Hype. I think, or maybe it's a double A side. This A side is Don't Believe the Hype. The B side is Prophets of Rage. Yeah. Um, lower level lip, laborious louse on the loser's list. <laughs> oh, firing off some synapses tonight. People remember this stuff. I thought I was the only one. Lower level. Tribe Car Quest on vinyl. I think I do. I have a signed Q. I met Q Tip on the train once, and he signed my uh, cassette of. I I always carried cassettes with me. I was like, is that Q Tip? And he signed my um, People's Instinctive. These guys were good. So th this is a spinoff band, Big Audio Dynamite. Spun off from what group? I mean, now this this might be a white boy question, but you have Don Letts and um, Mick Jones, and they formed Big Audio Dynamite. The Clash, very good. Chris, you know your stuff. And this this is on the uh, this is on the thing. All right, I can, uh, oh, there's still more stuff here. I'm trying to think. I'm disappointed. I had a Jungle Brothers album, and we filmed the Jungle Brothers. I forgot to bring it with me to the show to get signed. So my scam period. And then... Um, I got into the Smiths. This is a 12 inch. Um, I have a little bit of Dick Gregory footage that I'm holding, but um, it's not relevant to anything. 
Sun, MC Breeze. Naughty by Nature. Ah, uh, did I buy Naughty by Nature? I don't know. If I did, this, this I guess, I, I think is on the channel. Uncle Tom's Cabin soundtrack. I got that from Charles. Uh, Soul Shots. I forgot how to, to do with this. Well. Cool C stepped on the three times dope album cover. Oh, there's a little lag, I can tell. Craft work. I don't have craft work. Oh, that's a little before my time. I mean, Trans Europe Express, I mean, everybody knows that song. But I wasn't buying dance music in 81, 82, so I, I just missed it. I'm not sure if this is on the channel yet. I got to check. Reverend Jesse Jackson, Our Time Has Come, Democratic National Convention, 1984, July 17th, 84. So that's, what, 40 years old. Uh, laser disc. I'll look for some Tropical Quest, I think. I'm just looking. I'm just looking. Uh, pocket calculator. All right. Run, Jesse. Run. Somebody's on Eddie Murphy tonight. That's the second Eddie Murphy quote. Oh, no. Run, Jesse. Run is from uh, She's Gotta Have It. H hang on. Molly, take over. I'm going to look for this Tribe Called Quest. And then... Woke you up. She said, what are you doing? What did I miss in the chat? T-shirts are still for sale, yeah. So run, Jesse, run. Oh, Mr. Magic. I had a Mr. Magic album that I was going to put on the channel at one point. Angela by, Rick J by Bob James. Yeah, Taxi, Think from Taxi. That was a good song. So this, my, she's got to have it. Run, Jesse, run. And it's signed by Spike. Uh, Molly's thinking. Cocteau Twins. No. You know what I do have? I don't have Cocteau Twins. But I have a new order album here somewhere. Like it still has this OBI stripe. It goes. For, it would go for a lot if I wanted to sell it. If I could find the right buyer. If you sell it to a, a a dealer, you get nothing. But um. Yeah. Just going through the record. Rudery more albums. Hmm. On vinyl? I might, I might not. I'm not sure. I mean, I have, I have the box set that just went out of print. I'm proud of that. Mary Mason in the morning, so radio show, but it's YouTube. Oh, she's got to have a TV series. I didn't even watch it. Lawanda Page. There's some on the channel, Lawanda Page albums. Um, 
Man, I shook the wild man Steve last time. It's way over there. Uh, let's see. People know this album? Classic. The reality of my surroundings. Oh, I'm running out of space. Okay. Okay, been sweet. Quincy Jones, yeah. Lila Schifrin. Fishbone, yes. This is one of my favorite albums of all time. So I'll pick this up again. I had a beat up copy, but this is, I only paid $5 for this. This is a classic. I love this album. Stevie Wonder presents Sarita. So, oh, you need to see the back. No, it's not sealed. No, no, no. It doesn't even have the Motown jacket, so it's re redone. It's been played a lot. I, I picked up used um, when I was in New York a few years ago. They had a, a little record store. This is my original copy when I was a kid. This is one of the first records I ever bought with my own money. 1974. So Robert Cool Bell and the gang. Same time period. So 74 is my sweet spot. Stop it. Goofball. This is a reissue. I wish I had um, an original pressing. They're hard to find now. You know, people... You know, there was a time when CDs first came out, you could get, every used record store had copies of songs of the Kia Life on vinyl because everybody was replacing their vinyl with CDs 20 years ago. Now you try to find a vinyl copy of songs of the Kia Life, you got to pay $40 for it. So. First record I ever bought was a crazy ass record. What song about Harry Truman? which is way before my time. Geechee Dan. Do people remember the first record they ever bought? Um, I'd be curious to hear that. I mean, uh, ABC by the Jackson 5 was the first album I remember having. But Cool and the Gang, Wild and Peaceful was the first record that I bought with my own money. This, this record right here. And it's scratched up. It's scratched up to no end, but it's fun. Isn't she lovely? First album I ever got as a kid was Love Gun. Wow. Oh, I'm sorry, Molly. Hey, you want a treat? I, I'm hitting her with records, so. All right, come back here. Steve Martin. I had the Steve Martin album over here. Low Rider by War was the first I bought with my own pocket money. I like this conversation. Off the Wall for Christmas. I have a really fond memory of getting Off the Wall for Christmas and listening to it with my cousin. And we, we, we sang it together. We had the lyric sheet. I was about 11 years old. And we went through the whole album in my bedroom. And, and we listened to it. And we sang it together. Heat Wave. I, didn't, I never bought Heat Wave when I was younger. Uh, Molly isn't an awful nostalgia. Off the wall. I have off the wall over there too, somewhere. Do it with Jermaine. Yeah. Okay, Molly. You gotta. You, people want to see your face. People want to see your face. Up here. People want to see your face. She's cute when she reaches in. Ben, any Prince albums? I just showed Purple Rain. And the and the bootleg. The bootleg was over here. Okay, you got enough? Um Rod Stewart, not as good as a wink to a blind horse. That's um faces, right? 
Uh, hey, Molly. Houdini Escape was my first album. Curtis Mayfield, okay. King Crimson, Johnny Mitchell Faces. Oh, this is kind of cool. Six dollars. Wow. This took a long time to come out. I don't know if people remember, but um, it took like two years between Paid in Full and Follow the Leader. No mistakes allowed. Love Rock Kim. One, one of the joys. It's another spin off band, Fine Young Cannibals. So, okay. Spin off of uh, English Beat. That, that was a big breakthrough album. And then, you know, of course, they broke up after that. Oh, Chicken Fat. Yes, Wellington. I still have my Chicken Fat um, single from Jenks. Mr. I want to say Mr. Gardner. Was he our gym teacher? Chicken Fat. I need to find that record and put it up on the channel. Um, every, like, three, day, three days a week, we'd have gym class. Mr. Bachman, Bob Bachman was our gym teacher. And I hated gym class because I couldn't get all the way up the rope ladder. We had to climb a rope and um, we'd listen to chicken fat and do our calisthenics. You're mean. You see that? Did you see what she just did? You just bit my hand, you punk. Um, yeah, I, I love Ska. I love Ska Neil. Um, yeah, Molly's been mean. Oh, can't stay. Molly has no teeth. Oh, did, was I not supposed to say that? <laughs> Some Somehow Molly lost all of her teeth. Let me fix this before we move on. Oh, now she's done. She's done with me. You snitch. Um, Slick Rick. Slick Rick. I never bought... Did I buy Slick Rick on vinyl when it came out? Um, I might have. I don't know how old Molly is. Do, did I see the Jackie Robinson story? Yeah. Uh, I think it was on the channel. It might still be on the channel. It's a good movie. Better than Forty Two in some in some respects. I mean, I'm I wasn't necessarily a fan of Forty Two. Um, rest in peace, Chadwick Boseman. Um, I would have liked to seen Spike Lee's version. On Tomato Records, Dick Gregory. Um, uh, is this a bag I can put it in? Exercised by Robert Preston. No, it's not Robert Preston. Is it? I'll have to look it up on Discogs. Uh, Motown Early Days Documentaries. Um, when you say early, how early are you talking? Because there's a lot on YouTube. Um, but they didn't really make Documentaries that TV specials, Motown had TV specials more than documentaries. I have some stuff over here um, that's related to Motown. Uh, if I pull, uh, so you see the Soul Train, right? So you got Midnight Special. That's big enough to see. And then down here is Soul Train. Um, ready for the word digital display. I like that song too. I'm very 
Goy got started in Detroit and moved to LA? Good question. I mean, I don't know if there is a documentary. You know, it's upside down. This, for a long time, this was the only parliament record that was in circulation. They were all out of print at one point. I mean, now you can get them on Spotify, but... Um, You couldn't get any Funkadelic for a long time. And then this, this came out, so. Mid 80s P-Funk Cup, yep. And then this, these are a series. I don't even know which, I, I was picking these up. Christmas albums, I have the Jackson 5 Christmas album. I don't really like Christmas music that much. Oh, it's a Bobby Womack special. And somehow it's got some mold in it. All right, so I gotta figure out how to transcribe it. These, it's backwards, I, you know, but if you can decipher it. So the Navy, right, there's a Navy logo they did these radio shows and they sent the vinyl out to the different radio stations to play them. So this is a Bobby Womack special that I'd never transcribed. My George Clinton, someone said cameo. <laughs> oh gosh. Um, well, somebody just sent me some cash. Thank you. Who was it? Who who is the cash app queen? Cheryl. Okay, thank you so much, Cheryl. I haven't seen you in a while. Did I get a chance to see? I gotta, oh, I gotta use my other finger. I did not get up to Brooklyn. I had a chance to go the last weekend that I was in town and it just would have been cost prohibitive at that point and also time was of an essence because I was still teaching. So the last weekend I got invited to come up and hang in with my friend Danqua and go to the exhibit. Did not make it up there um, for money reasons and time reasons, but I heard it was dope. I mean, right now the Brooklyn Museum has an exhibition of photographs that are owned by um, uh, Swiss Beats and, and um, Alicia Keys up. So they're doing a good thing in, at the museum there. Um, do I prefer, I don't like anything with peanuts. Lupo 32, I'm not a peanut butter person. So, I mean, maybe that's a bad thing, but I'm not a big peanut butter person. What's your favorite? That's a fair question for everybody. Snickers or Reese's? And again, if you're just tuning in, this is not for you. If you just, we're just hanging out and we're talking. So this is my, my son's allergic to peanuts. I just, I'm not, I never got into peanut butter. I mean, I like peanuts by themselves. Love honey roasted peanuts, but in, in a chocolate bar, this light might go out soon too. But um, you love both Snickers and Reese's. I think Reese's is going to win the vote. Voyeur, keep track of who's voting on that one. I think Reese's is going to win. Uh, let me see. I'm trying to reach more stuff, but I can't get to it. Um, I don't want to overshare. Mr. Goodbar. Wow. That's going back. That's, that's like Reggie bars. And, um, I, I know, um, Chris Dragnet knows when I when I say Marathon Bar. You remember that and Bubblicious. You know all those seventies candies. Bubblicious, Freshen Up Gum, a hundred thousand dollar bar. Yup. 
Candy talk. Yeah, okay, well, it looks like the chat's moving. I'll talk candy for a minute. Um, Mr. Goodbar got the best tasting milk chocolate. Bubblicious. Mamba. I don't remember Mamba, Angie. Mamba, isn't, isn't that, watch my call, I don't remember. Mamba, was that, is that like a, that's not chocolate though, right? Mary Jane or Bitter Honey. Freshen up gum. If they made freshen up gum now, it'd be, it wouldn't have the same squirt. Like, I, I don't know if people, I feel like people are of the generation that I am. So we can talk, I don't have to explain. Oh, Mamba, they still make Mambas, yeah. I've had Mamba. Um... Would I ever consider going vegan? Yes, I want to go vegan. I I hate the idea that I have literally have dead animal in my freezer and refrigerator for me to eat. That bothers me at this stage of my life. And if I could find more vegan options or ways to preserve the food, that's that's the biggest problem I have with buying vegetables is you, ha you have to go to the store like two and three times a week so like i went to the store yesterday i love swedish fish yes um i bought a big bag of kale and spinach greens to make a uh, smoothie with and bananas and apples and all that kind of stuff and you know if you don't do that within three days it's just, it's just goes to it goes bad Right, so you know, I'm living here by myself, and and it's it's tough to um, to have a vegan diet. Eating a lot of Jolly Ranchers, wow, that's something I haven't thought about in a long time. I remember cichlids, but didn't eat them much. Chicklets, you mean? Cichlids, chicklets. We used to, that that used to be my treat when I go to the pediatrician when I was like three and. Two and three years old, we'd stop at the store on the way back from the pediatrician and, and I'd, I'd get a box of chiclets. And chiclets, at the time, they had the cellophane window on them so you could see the the gum inside the box. And then later they got rid of the plastic, the cellophane, and they just put them so it was like a, a picture of the chiclets. And they, to me, they weren't as good after that. Ever wanted to produce stuff? I've produced films. You know, like a big movie or, I mean, I make films all the time. They just end up on YouTube. I, you know, I don't make a big name for Raisinets. Oh, you got one, Geechee? What you got? Lemonheads, Alexander the Grapes, Cherry Chans or Boston Baked Beans. I would go with Lemonheads. Zots. Peanut Butter Mary Jane. I have a Mary Jane story. I'll tell in a second. Cichlids were small, candy-coated chocolate balls. Okay, I vaguely remember that. Vaguely remember. Space dust, I do remember that. Well, space dust was sort of like the cousin to um, Pop Rocks, right? Space, it's like the knockoff. Space dust was knockoff to... Like, Pop Rocks were popular, so I said, let's come up with Space Dust. Powered, powder candy that fizz when you put it on your tongue. Space Dust turned into gum. Okay, thank you. What's my favorite food movie? Right off the top, I think one of the best movies about food that I've ever seen. I've never seen, like, Water for Chocolate. Never seen that one, but to me, Eat, Drink, Man, Woman is a great movie. When you talk about Fun Dip, okay, you bring it back. Fun Dip was fun because you licked it and then you stuck it in the this, this stuff and then you licked it off. Big Chew, Kit Kat, Food Film, Sausage Party. I took my mom to see Sausage Party. I don't know what was on my mind. <laughs> I took my my. 70 year old mom to see Sausage Party and she loved it. I'm like watching all these little uh, these characters curse at one another and I'm like what did I do? 
because they, they're all having sex with one another and I'm sitting next to my mom and she's cracking up and I'm like, I, this is so inappropriate. What foods do I, I don't think I hate eating anything. I don't hate like that, Alexander, but, um, you know, if it's something I don't like, I, I just don't eat it. I'm not a big seafood person in, in that respect. But, um, you know, I like Chinese food probably more than any, any food. I'll probably eat more Chinese food in a year than I do any other kind of food. Um, oh, the story I was going to tell was, um, let me go back. I forgot what it was, I was going to say. Uh, Big Night. Oh, Big Night's a good movie. Like Water for Chocolate, Fun Dips, Smarties, Red Vines, um, Rocks. Oh, I was going to tell a story about my grandmother, right? So as you get older and you're less mobile, you can't just go out and do what you want. You got to rely on other people. She wanted Mary Janes. And my mother got into Mary Janes too. And I would, and they'd be impossible to find, right? So the Mary Janes are like these little peanut buttery candies that are wrapped, like penny candies, right? And I guess she remembered them from her childhood and she wanted some, and she'd always ask me to get them for her, right? So anytime I would see them, I would grab like a little bag of them at the supermarket, they'd have like penny candy at the end of the aisle in like a little bag. You might get 20 pieces or something like that, maybe 30 pieces of it, right? So every once in a while when I could find them, I would bring them home. Then Amazon comes out, right? And I found that you could order what they order at the penny candy store, like a bucket, 240 pieces of Mary Jane's, right? In a big barrel like this. So I said, well, this, this will save me time, right? I'll get them for my, my grandmother, right? And um, so I ordered these things, 240 Mary Jane's. How long do you think it took her to go through the whole barrel of them? Less than a month. She ate a whole 200 pieces because they were sitting next to her chair in the living room. She'd watch TV and she'd eat these things. And um, then I noticed she gained all this weight. She had like a belly after that and she never got rid of it. I felt so guilty. You know, like she had like this little tummy because she ate all these Mary Jane so fast. You know, so I had to stop. Fake candy cigarettes. Well, they banned those candy cigarettes. I like the ones that you could blow and some of the powdered sugar would come out of them. The gum ones, because they had two different kinds of candy cigarettes. They had the ones that were like all made of candy and they had like the little red tip on the end. Right, Chris? And then they had the ones that were like made out of gum that was wrapped in paper and you could act like you were smoking the candy cigarette and then you could blow it and a little puff of powdered sugar would come out the end like it was smoke, right? Chalk candy, yep. Why They didn't want kids pretending to be smoking. That's why they banned them. You know, they didn't want to promote the idea of kids smoking cigarettes. So just like they got rid of, you know, toy guns, cap pistols. You can't get a cap pistol anymore um, for the same reason. They don't want to promote violence among kids, you know, so... Like, if kids want to do that, they have to either get a real gun or play a video game now. I was seven, eight, smoking candy once I got candy jumping down. Blow pops. So, all right, so Tootsie Pop or Blow Pop? Who? Per what's the preference? You can still get cap guns. Not, not like the ones we used to play with. I'll tell you, when I was, like, when I first started out with the cap gun, they had the roll of paper caps. And then 
around eight or nine years old, they had the, the cap revolvers that were plastic caps and they were louder and they, they made more noise, but they're like little round plastic caps with loads of gunpowder in each one, right? I had all the guns. Blow pop, then the gum reward, but the gum was trash. Okay, cap guns are something else. We would rock, drop a rock on the whole entire roll of caps. Yeah, you could light the you could light the caps, or you could just run a quarter across all the caps and make them explode. Yeah, I remember that. You're bringing back memories. Yeah, you take the 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 caps and you lay them out on the street, and then you take a coin and you just slide it across and explode them all. You know, well, I know if Wellington's still here, you remember in Philly, firecrackers were not legal, right? So every summer, there'd always be somebody that went down south, down to Virginia or North Carolina someplace, and brought back a whole bunch of um, firecrackers and was selling them on the street, you know, like they were drugs. Like, oh, man, you know, um, Kevin, he just came back from... North Carolina, man, he's he's got all these firecrackers. You want to buy some from him? And then um, eventually we discovered that there were some stores, some Asian-owned stores that um, would sell you firecrackers, even though they were illegal. You'd have to you'd have to go in and like um, like with you'd have to have like a password or something. You'd have to know what store to go to. There was always some Asian dude in the back, and he was—he'd sell you a brick of firecrackers, and you know this is these. This is before people start losing fingers and hands and stuff. They were like really basic firecrackers, right? But um, oh, snap caps, yeah, those were legal. But we didn't call them snap caps; we called them something else. But yeah, they were like little paper things. Yeah, not M eighty. Well. I remember one guy, he brought an M80 back from down south and he put it in a mailbox. Party poppers, that's the name, yep, poppers. So, no, it was. I'm not I'm not being shady, that's the truth. That's where you could get firecrackers back in the day, if you in Philly when they were legal. Um, it was always it was never it's when Asians started taking over the corner stores. You can get those firecrackers. Sparklers, yeah, we can get sparklers at the wars. Um, yeah, somebody had an M80, and you could hear from blocks around, they stuck it in a mailbox. And then somebody blew off a um, newspaper box, too, with an M80 on the corner. We heard it explode. Went, what was that? And went down the street, and the whole newspaper box was on fire. It was insane. The kind of stuff people would do back then. I guess they still do. It was just not, um, yeah, summer's coming. But yeah, you, the thing about it though, it was good that, um, fireworks were not legal in the city because it made you more judicious. Like, you, you know, you'd, you'd have to be really bold to, like, light a whole pack of firecrackers. Right, you were basically lighting them one at a time and throwing them, or you'd light them and you'd run away and you'd watch one pop. And then towards the end of the night, when you were all done, you'd light the whole pack, you know, cause they'd, they'd be strung together in a way, right? Or you could, um, once you just said something funny. Jumping Jacks and Mateys. What did Wellington say? Black cat firecrackers are rough, yep. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Smoke bombs, yep. Yeah, I never I never had an M80. I never lit an M80. But yeah, half half a stick of dynamite. Black cats, yeah, so you you'd light the one and then the whole pack would go up and smoke. Stink bombs. Yeah, people bring those to school. And that was unfortunate. You know, people would like light a stink bomb and roll it down the hall or, or throw it into a classroom and stuff. Yeah, smoke bombs. 
Snakes. Yeah, I remember that. Do they still make these things? I haven't bought a firework in years. Like those snakes, you light them and they, they turn into snakes. Roman candle fights. <laughs> Geechee, that's, that's brutal. I've never lit a Roman candle. I've only lit fireworks, snakes, smoke bombs, sparklers. What's a stick you would light and shake it in the air? That's a Roman candle, I think. Yeah. But I also cherry bombs, yeah. I remember when the Silaloom light sticks first came out. Do people remember those? Silaloom, si, I hope I'm saying it right. Silaloom light stick. We used to get those at the Franklin Institute, right? And later they became big popular things with the with the um, rave people when they made them into necklaces and stuff. But the first light sticks, they were little plastic tubes and you crack them and you shake them up and then they, they lit up just like um, lightning bugs. It was the same color as a lightning bug. And they'd stay, they'd stay, they'd glow for a couple hours and then they would fade off. But, um, what did MG say? I'm, I'm using the wrong finger. Been essentially avoiding fireworks. Yeah. Break the stick off a fire bottle. Voyeur, you're getting dangerous. My friend used to catch lizards and tie a bottle rocket. Oh, God. Pack the sulfur for matches, you can make a firecracker. I haven't seen a match in forever. Everything's like a lightning bugs. It's just a little early in the season. I still see lightning bugs, but it's not, it's, I'm driving. I'm not walking around looking for stuff to do in the afternoon now, but I'm sure if you went back to my childhood home, you'd still see um, lightning bugs come through. What, what, Voyeur, when do they hit around May, June? June bugs? Catching lightning bugs? Yeah, June bugs. Yeah, that, that used to be something that, that we'd do, go in the backyard, catch them, put them in a jar, and then let them sit for a couple of days till they died. May, you know. Praying mantises and lightning bugs and all that kind of stuff. We never caught lizards or turtles or anything like that. We didn't go, we didn't have a creek near us. Green lightning bugs eat the yellow ones. Interesting. Catch them in mason jars, praying mantises, busy scrolling their phones. Yeah, that's the new distraction, right? But I would go out, if I had a kid, I'd go out and catch lightning bugs with them. Frogs. Where'd Molly go? She got mad. She got tired of me. And more vinyl. Make a paper football field on paper and make ants play. Well, I remember playing football, like we'd fold up a piece of paper and then we'd make it, we'd play football on the desk. We'd slide it and then we'd set up our fingers and then we'd have to kick it through with our fingers to score points. Anybody else do that? Paper football? Valley Green got baby lobsters, crayfish under rocks. Yeah, Valley Green was fun. I'm talking about paper football. So you had paper football and what, um, what were the other lunchroom games. Paper football. We had wall ball. Wellington knows about wall ball. I don't know if any of anybody else does, but it jinx wall ball and then wall ball football. Pencil breaking. Oh, sporks. Did you guys have sporks? Oh, you're back. Okay. 
get up here. Wall ball, yeah. Um, Wellington, explain wall ball while I, I feed. So we had tennis balls, and the way the masonry was done at the school, some of the pillars had slants on them, right? So you could play um, handball against the wall if it was flat. But if you can imagine, like, here's a flat wall. If, if it was slanted slightly, we'd throw the ball against the slant. It would pop it up in the air, and then we'd have to catch it. Right? So we do that for a while. Then somebody said, well, what if we make it wall ball football? Right? So we throw the tennis ball against the wall. It would fly up in the air. We Somebody would catch it. Then they'd have to run and tag the, the wall with uh, before anybody could ta tag them out. Right? So um, that's how I got my first injury. I had to get stitches because it was raining one day. It was like a little drizzle. And I must it must have been about fourth grade, so I was about nine years old, ten years old. And um we were playing wall ball football and I caught the ball, I ran, I got to the wall, and there was like a metal grate there, and I slid on the grate, fell backwards, hit the back of my head, had like a little concussion, and I split the back of my head, I still have the marks from the stitches back here. I had to get like four or five stitches and I was crying. It was blood everywhere. It was awful. But um, wall ball football, that was one of our sports that we played up higher so people can see. All right. Hot ball is the same as dodgeball. Up high so people can see. Battle scars. Yeah, I got I got I caught another one. Alright, you can get that. I caught another one on my thumb. It's still there. That's a cat scratch. But if you look closely, there's a scar here. I didn't get stitches, but it it didn't heal a hundred percent. Um, we were out in the woods and I just heard about, you could break off a bottle and stab somebody with it. Somebody told me a story about that, right? So we're out in the woods and, um, I broke this bottle and my dumb ass tried to stab a tree and it cut back on me. The bottle collapsed, all the broken glass collapsed on my fist, and it cut the thumb wide open. And you can imagine how freaked out my grandmother was um, when uh, I came back. We rode our bikes, and blood was dripping all the way, you know, back home. I had to wrap it up a little bit, but blood was dripping everywhere. It was all awful. And then... You know, why, what did you do that for? Why would you want to do that? <laughs> um, that's not the dumbest thing I ever did. The dumbest thing I ever did, my grandmother, she just got a Thunderbird. 77, 76, 77 Thunderbird, white Thunderbird. And um, back then, this is when they had ashtrays and, and, and cigarette lighters in the back seat, right? So on the door, right? So I'm sitting in the back seat and, um, you know, so I was about eight years old, seven years old, eight years old. And you push, I don't know if people remember this, you push the cigarette lighter in and then it comes back and it's like a, a hot piece of metal there and you can light your cigarette, right? So my dumb ass, Pushed it in, and um, you, you see where it's going. I put my finger in there, and then smoke came up, and I screamed. And they're like, what are you doing? Why would you do that? 
So I burn my finger. So, but that's not the end of it. Like after it healed, you know, I had like third degree burns in my finger from doing this dumb thing. About two weeks later, I did the exact same thing. They're like, well, the first time we understood, the second time you deserved it, you dumb. Let's see what else is here. Yeah, so, you know, I didn't know any better. I'm, I'm okay now. This is an ABC compilation. They're just now starting to put Ray Charles owns the Masters to all his Tangerine records, and it took forever for them to come out. So, going back to Cali and Jack the Ripper. Russell Stover over Whitman's. Interesting. I'll take Russell Stover. Oh, that's why I mentioned Flip Wilson earlier. Um, oh, this is the New Order album I was talking about. That's why I mentioned Cocteau Twins. This is New Order. I think Shell Shock is on here. Well, maybe not. I was big into John Hughes movies. So... He would always have these soundtracks that had great alternative songs on them, right? So, Molly, do you know this? Ah, you don't know this. Um, so, I think it was Pretty in Pink soundtrack had New Order on it. So, this is the first album that came out after the, um, somebody texted me. Stop it. Um... First album that came out after Pretty in Pink, so that's why I have it. But uh, yeah, I don't listen to it that often. Oh, this is a good. Uh, this is a great cover. I love this cover. Chess album. Doctor Dr. Pepper, Mister Pip. I like Pip Extra when I can get it. Sixteen Candles is still good. You have a little John Hughes section. Let's kick on the channel. It smells a little musty. King Holiday. So there are a lot of these kind of things. This is, actually, this is authorized. Oh, shit. I got to put this one on the channel. There's a music video for this, too. But this is um, the King Holiday Dream Chorus and Holiday Crew. Elle DeBarge, Whitney Houston, Stacey Lattisaw, Lisa Lisa. Tina Marie, Menudo, Stephanie Mills, New Edition, James J.T. Taylor of Cool and the Gang, and the Holiday Crew, Curtis Blow, The Fat Boys, Grandmaster Melly Mel, Run DMC, Houdini. Do people know this? So this is when they were trying to get a holiday for Dr. King. They put out a record. So we'll have to do something with that one. Yeah, the music video. I wish I had the music video. RC Cola. This is still sealed. This is a reissue. I just haven't gotten around to it. What's going on here? Preskin Tab, Canada Dry, King Howdy Sound. I'll have to listen to it. Duto Records. Black Entrepreneur, Black Owned Record Label. He, he went around recording comedy acts. Dootsie Williams. That's Dootsie. And he discovered Red Fox, basically. In terms of putting him on vinyl. Dootsie.
Hmm. Well, this, this is a fun one. Discontinued because of aspartame. Oh, yeah, I can understand that. Jolt is the OG Red Bull. I remember Jolt when it came out. I was in college. And we think, oh, you know, we buy that to try to stay up at night to cram. Liquor Hereford Cow came in vanilla, chocolate, and strawberry. No, that sounds awful. Hereford Cow advertising Essence Jet and Ebony magazines around the 70s. It was called a liquor. Vanilla flavored and chocolate and strawberry flavored liquors. Interesting. All right, here's what's a classic. I might put this on tonight. We're getting close to it's after eleven. People still hanging out. Um, I'm just reading comments right now. Root beer. I love root beer. Channel forty eight. Yep. Wee Willie Weber. Slice soda, apple slice. I remember that. Now you you speak in my language. Yeah, there was another flavor, apple slice. And then years later, there was an apple flavored soda that came out later. And it tasted just like apple slice. Just like... um. There was a blue one, Blue Sky Soda, that was out in the 70s also. And um, it was like a, a blue berry kind of thing, Blue Sky Soda. Anybody remember that? Apple Jake Guzzlers just woke up and had, hey, Evelina. Stevie is plant based, a 23 trolley. Yep. Bringing back memories, yeah. Ginger ale or root beer soda. Never get the girls the underarm odor. And this biz right behind me. Nobody beats the biz. Blue knee high. Tahitian treat. Yeah, I, I remember people that remember when they had orange, bits of orange in the sodas. In the Tahitian treats, you know. Hey, CBC, we're just hanging out and talking about sodas right now. If you're just tuning in, this is not something that you want to replay. We're just going, we're just having out, hanging out and having fun. And maybe we'll go another 15 minutes or so. Does that make sense? Sledding down Water Tower Hill on cardboard. I remember that. What? Cherry Coke with a lot of ice. There was a place. Well, Wellington didn't go. I think it's called Mario's Pizza. It was right across the street from Central High School. And it's still a pizza place across from Central High School, but it's not the same owners. But they had a soda fountain there, and you could get them to make a cherry Coke for you, right? Or a cherry Pepsi from the fountain drink, like they pour half a Coke and then half a cherry soda. It's like the best, still to the to this day, one of the best sodas I've ever had. Any Brazilian black art or culture? Not necessarily. I've been to Brazil, but I, I can't say, I mean, I know Capoeira and all that stuff, but I don't, I just don't know. Do I care about Creed's daughter for a future film? You know, I'm, I'm behind on Creed. I didn't watch Creed 3 yet. I just bought it. I should put it on, but you know, that whole Jonathan Majors thing has gotten, it threw me off a little bit. So I'm not, I'm not anxious to watch Creed 3. Bartles and James, that was uh, wine coolers, right? The pop shop, mainly in the Midwest. You can make a business out of anything. Seagram's Wine Cooler, Boone's Farm. Good to see you back. I've been teaching Jim, so I haven't really had the time to come on and, and just hang out. But Sean's here. Hey, 
I, I didn't know you were up. Drinking what? We're drinking Red Stripe. Right now, the conversation has gone to sodas and malt liquors. So we're talking about Zima. Zima's interesting because it's sort of like a knockoff of uh, Uzo, which is a Greek alcoholic beverage that, that tastes like licorice. So Zima tastes like, li like black licorice. They marketed it well. I drank some of it. But the worst hangover I had was I went to Greece when I was in college. And um, I had some ouzo. And that stuff tasted nasty. It gave me the worst hangover. I, in my, literally, my skull was ringing the next day. Jägermeister. Okay. What was it? I'm trying to think of the name of this beer um, that my roommate used to drink. Grolsch, Grolsch beer. He was a big fan of that. Everclear. Oh, no, I didn't go as far as Everclear. I did not go as far as Everclear. I had the, I don't know if it's still here, the um, the soundtrack to all the um, St. Ides. I can look for that. Why you guys talk about Thunderbird? Brass Monkey. So it's gone from, it's gone from uh, sodas to liquors. Mad Dog 2020. Everybody brings up MD 2020. And let's see what's over here. Being good. You're being good. She's keeping good company. Cross colors commercials. No. I'm sure there's some on YouTube. Long Island iced tea. The the mixed Long Island iced tea or you're dating yourself. You're like my, my mom, like we'd go out and she would ask for a Shirley Temple. And I'd be like, no. She's like, do you have a Shirley Temple? No. She, just embarrassing me. She'd like to find ways to embarrass me in public. My mom, miss her so much. Oh, Mr. All right, who? Bismarcky, and what's the name of his DJ? Vashon knows. What's the DJ's name? Well, sure. Well, everybody's Shirley Temple's different, isn't it? Cool V. There you go. Chris Dragnet. Very good. More Prince. She's not gonna be happy. Let me make some space. Can never drink beer. Tried to choke with Corona. Al, you don't like beer? Velvet bag. We're talking about Crown Royale. <laughs> Cool V, there you go. All beer tastes like it's a it's an acquired taste. But isn't it a rite of passage to get used to the taste of certain things or cigarette smoke or whatever? Oh, this is signed. Interesting. Oh, they're both signed. Wow. Okay, hang on. Chaos One is gonna be performing in Philadelphia next weekend, by the way, next Sunday. I'll be at the Chaos One show, but
I need some help in the film class. This I had, and I didn't realize I had it here. Um, I could have gotten it signed by the Jungle Brothers. I missed out. Just like last night, I had Bruce Bruce, and I forgot to bring my Bruce Bruce DVD. Oh, you want to see Cool C again? I'll see if I can find it. Uh, it's back here. Hang on, let me get through these. Classic. This is this is some great mood music. I don't know if it would still work, like with with these hoochie chicks. I think they just want to hear Cardi B. But um, great date night album. Is it still sealed? This might be sealed. No, it's not sealed. Classic. Earth, Wind, and Fire. Not really. I don't have any Earth, Wind, and Fire here. Just a little jazz. Uh, Blue Note. This probably would go for a lot somewhere. Somewhere would pay a lot for that. Magic Rhythm and Blues. Orange Jameson. Yeah, Donald Byrd is great. And Kings, my guilty pleasure. Oh, this could be interesting. This is a interview album. I, I can't really put it on real black, but it's um, Kinks Think Visual promo. Did not brought that here. Huh. Donovan. Like hippie rock, mellow yellow. This is a good album, by the way. I like this album a lot. This, I used the song Cristo Redentor in my student film. I do have some Cheech and Chong. I don't know if it's here in the house, though. Love Cheech and Chong. Get a mailbox. Hmm. All right, so who who's the lead singer of The Doors? What did I, what did Neil say? I gotta go back. Jim Morrison, very good. Old hippies don't die; we just go up and smoke. That's funny. I get a mailbox. I'm not sure what that means, Wellington. I have a Sade interview album. Oh, I need that. I didn't know Sade did an interview album. I gotta find that. Put it on the channel, Spanish Caravan, yes. This is the alternate cover. This is the British cover of um, Beggar's Banquet. I like the American cover better, but is it in, did I give you that inside or is this a total repro? When they put these out, that smells like my basement. Um, same inside. Uh, yeah, I like the other with the cake. Beggar's Banquet with the cake cover. I guess they couldn't show a toilet back in the States. This was really pushing it a, a boundary to show a toilet. Back then. Love the Stones of the Beatles. Not really a Beatles fan. I, I would say so too. 
Rashawn, you still here? Nine one one is a joke. Fight the power, fear of a black planet. Welcome to the Terror Dome. I remember, you know, I was working on the Chris Rock documentary and Chris came to Philly to do a show at the Laugh House, David Brenner's Laugh House. And um, he had on cassette in his car, Welcome to the Terror Dome. And I remember we were riding, it was, it was on South Street. We were circling the block and he was blasting Welcome to the Terror Dome. It was the first time I heard it. I was like, wow, this is incredible. Because, you know, what Vashon can help. If Fear of a Black Hat Planet was at like the third, this is the third album, right? So before that was um, Takes a Nation of Millions, which brought everybody together. And then before that was um, the one where they're in the gas station or whatever, or the McDonald's parking lot. So I'd never heard, obviously never heard Welcome to the Terror Dome. And um, it was mind blowing because the, the, the sampling was so much more precise and all that other stuff, you know. Otis, one of my faves. I mean, I, I don't think, this is one artist, Otis Redding. I don't think he ever recorded a bad song his entire career. I think every, every single song that Otis Redding recorded, even the covers like Day Tripper, which is on this, is well produced, well recorded. I I think you could drop a needle on any Otis Yo Bone Mercer show, thank you. Um on any Otis Redding album and you're you're not gonna lose. I don't think he ever made a bad record. Um yeah. Yo, bum rush the show. Is it over there? Molly, do you mind taking over? I'll, I'll see if I have, if, if that's the case, I probably have all of my PE over here. Let me see. We're almost done. All right, take over. Okay, people are tuning out. Did Vashon, we got about half the people from the peak. Vashon's still here. Second is better, Yo sounds like they're from Long Island, not as polished. I agree. I mean, I, I, I like all, well, the first, I mean, take, takes a nation of millions is just on a whole nother level. But I, I'm a true fan of Public Enemy. I remember my first introduction to Def Jam recordings was um, the Beasties had a single. Before she's on it. Um,
Remember the first Beastie Boy single? Oh, it's called Beastie Groove. Well, not 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 on Def Jam because they had they had Cookie Puss before that, but Beastie Groove came on WKDU. It was like one of the last days of school, my senior year, and we didn't have anything to do but show up because all the assignments were turned in and everything. So we were just sitting in the class and we had the radio on. And, you know, I'm in the rap, obviously, at that point in time. And then, you know, it's an ACDC sample and um, BC Groove comes on. I was like, what? what is that? And I had to track that record down. I found it eventually. Nobody had it. Nobody was carrying it. I had to, I eventually found it in New York, I think. Or maybe I got it at Sound of Market Street. But I was so happy to find that record. And then months later, um, License to Ill comes out. And um, that record kind of changed my life in a way, you know, because it, it was so well done. Well, Pat and Rick Rubin. Well, you know, it was a double, it was a double whammy because it was... Um, Rick Rubin also did the LL Cool J album. And um, there was a jukebox at Mario's Pizza across from Central High School. And they had a I Need Love. And I think the, the 45, because, you know, on a jukebox, they played both sides. You could pick either side of the record. I think I Can Give You More was... Um, the B side of I Need Love. So I um, I used to like to play the B side. When I first heard that song, I Can Give You More, I was like, wow, this is really good. And it always Rick Rubin, you know? So, I mean, who doesn't have this in their collection? I'm on the fence. I mean, are you, this is considered one of the best albums of all time, right? You know, change a lot of people. Yeah. No. Nah. No. Nah. It's a good album. I mean, I you know, it's a good album. All right. Overrated. <laughs> Survival device. I missed that. I didn't get that joke. Somebody's multitasking. Here's a Christmas album. Oh, we're not going to get to Wayne Newton today. Oh, oh, this is... This needs to go in the trash. Ooh, I stole this from my aunt. Okay, that's cool. No, I was like, I know I didn't make a flotation device. That's all good. Survival channel. Lenny, Lenny looks good. I wish I'd stayed vegan and dated uh, Lisa Bonet when I was 20. Married Lisa Bonet when I was 20. Lenny, Lenny had a blessed life. And that's Dave Davies sign that when I interviewed him. Big Kinks fan. What's interesting, this is this got a BB in it. Right, they used to put BBs in the cutouts. And this is a mono pressing, so look that up. 
if I could meet Ray, I would, uh, you know, it would be worth even more, right? So a mono pressing of kink controversy signed by Dave Davies. That's got to be worth something somewhere. Uh, what are BBs? So um, instead of punching a hole through the record, they shoot a BB through it to to avoid it, you know, sort of like crossing out the barcode nowadays or scratching the barcode. It would just indicate that it was it was a remainder copy with the BB as opposed to an original pressing. So that's, that's another, and this might be stereo. Yeah, this is stereo. I like the old reprise. British pressing B sides. Yeah, I met Cynthia. She was great. Uh, you see that interview? Taste of Honey. Yeah, there is a video where I get that signed. You're very good, Voyeur. I'm, I'm, I'm amazed. Misfits. Uh, I was. My what's my favorite Kinks? I I like a uh, um, give the people what they want from that Arista era era. Lucky in Love, I think was on this. Yeah, just another night. So he, he's got the androgyny going full force here. And what's amazing, he's still out there doing it. Oh, you met Prodigy? That's awesome. There's one. I bought the first day it came out. Oh, we we're talking about give the people what they want. Yeah. Got that the first day. Of release. So that's that's uh first day pressing. Uh, great album. Still relevant. Uh, yeah, yeah, I got a lot of vinyl. I got to straighten it out. These African folk tales. I think some of these made it to the channel um, before we stopped. Doing them. Um, hey, sorry, buddy. And then th these got me through. Oh, okay, good way to close. Atlantic Rhythm and Blues. This was a great series back in the day. There's another Donald Bird. I need help to get through the summer, Chris. Yeah, this and this, everything's kind of out of order. Um, I have an app that keeps track of my um, my DVDs, thankfully, but Lionel, sorry. That's what I was looking for. Hey, Jibba Jabba. Thank you. So th this is earth shattering. And then on the back there at the McDonald's with the 98 four the 98 Oldsmobiles. I mean, they were scary. These were some scary Negroes when they first came out. Glenny e. Friedman artwork. Yeah. So. Now they're Flavor of Love and all that other stuff. They're very mainstream, conventional. But when Ice Cube and Public Enemy first came out, they were frightening. Dire Straits. I never bought that album. 
They were good. I mean, I watched the videos, but it wasn't music that I bought. Maybe I did buy a Dire Straits album. I mean, you know, you, we listened to everything back in high school. It was not as segregated. My musical taste was not as segregated in high school, as you can tell by the vinyls. But um, Devo, my friend was really into Devo. He had all the Devo albums. I didn't have Devo. Elvis Costello I liked. Yes, MG. Elvis Costello, I had the, every day I write the book, that was a good album. Punch the Clock. The Chronic album I bought on CD. If I bought the vinyl on Chronic, man, that'd be worth a lot. But, you know, the thing about that time period, I don't know if you remember this, but the CDs always had bonus tracks compared to the vinyl. So it was almost like they wanted you to convert over to get the to get the CDs. So like Biggie on vinyl, I didn't buy that. I bought the CD. I think I bought the cassette first and I bought the, the CD on that. But you know, by, I mean, all this stuff is like 87, 88, 89, right? By 90, 91, I was full into CDs. Do I have the DOC? I do. It's some I showed it last time. Uh, I think I can find it. Uh, I'll, I'll let you take over. I'll see if I can find the DOC, and I'll, I'll tell you a DOC story. It might be here. Let's see. MG. stay up late and listen to some of this stuff. I need to get this signed before it's too late. I mean, Schooly, I need to get Schooly back on the show. Laser does. Great album. It's Jose James, we had him on the show. I gotta finish working on that. I think we do a whole special with him, but I, I don't know. Yeah, Schooly D and MC Breeze had their own labels, yeah. This, this troubles me, it's empty. The record sleeve is empty. I'm not sure where the record is. Uh, this is something from Charles. No. Could do records. What did I miss? You're going to bed, Elizabeth? We're going to wrap it up. I don't feel like you missed anything. 
Lasting Freehouse. Joe Jackson. I like Joe Jackson. Oh, I'm talking about Royce. I was going to put this up and then didn't get around to a Jane Kennedy workout. Okay, yeah, here it is. Anyone know him? Speak on one hit wonders. So it's a laser disc. You know, I just don't know. I I love Stanley Jordan. I don't know if I can get away with putting this up. So I, I left it alone. Uh, this I picked up recently. Um, this. This is fair game. What's going on with that? Okay, I see. Playboy Jazz Festival. I think it's hosted by Bill Cosby. That's something. Oh, here's another one of those um, Lou Rawls albums. And this is uh, Al Green. Who knew? Al Green. So that, that might make it to the channel. I'll have to, when I put these back, I'll, I'll make a pile of stuff to transfer. Stanley Jordan. Yeah. No, he was, he's great. He's still great. He's got some good stuff. This is on the channel. I love Al Green. He's another artist that I don't think has ever made a bad record. Um, let me see. Uh, this is signed. I gotta find a sleeve for it. Um, Lamont McLemore signed this for me. So, and he's got a new book out. What's inside? What's this? Oh, Lamont McLemore. Portfolio. He gave this to me, I guess. I don't, I don't remember him giving it to me. He's he's great. Um, he he he's been sick lately. He had a stroke, but um, he just put a book out. Wow. Okay. All right. Chris Dragnet. I can't show you. Oh, that's art, artsy. He's got a nude thing, but look at that. How lucky. Lamont Macklemore, my hero. You're out, MG? Okay, we're going to wrap it up. Marilyn McCoo and Billy Davis Jr. did have a summer replacements show. One of my heroes. Many Bruce. Grace Jones. I have a Grace Jones album somewhere, but not here. I gotta retransfer this.
not signed, Mel Brooks. <laughs> Chris, stop. This is really rare. Let me take the plastic off it. I don't know if you can find too many of these. What Philly stores? I, I used to like Brewer Town Beats before they had to close it. Ooh, this is looking bad. I don't know if it's all even play. The back, look at the back of that thing. It's full of glue and, but this, um, you know, if you're a Prince fan, So, does anybody know what this is? So Prince, he put out a CD-ROM, a computer game. It's a Prince computer game with snippets of music and things. I, I think I've only played it once, but um, I got it. It was a closeout, so it was in a strip with a whole bunch of other video games and things. George Clinton put an interactive game out as well that I have somewhere. But I'm um, not sure where it is. It was like a mix this or something you can mix with this kind of thing. But I don't know how many copies they actually sold or pressed of the Prince game. Does he play basketball? And I don't know. I got to figure out how to... I mean, Prince is such a touchy topic on YouTube that it's almost not like worth the time to uh, to try to transfer it. But I I think you need Windows nineteen ninety four Warner Brothers Records Graphic Zone made in USA, Multi a multimedia experience by one of the world's greatest musical artists features full length videos. So you, so that's what that is. But um, okay, it's almost midnight. So let me finish reading these things. Steve Bucaro probably need an old computer. Yep. Yeah, Prince and George Clinton's autograph. Wow, that's really great because Prince didn't sign too many autographs. Apparently, he didn't like to sign his name. Um, Kate Bush, yeah. Um. DVD, no. Human Nature for Michael Jackson, yeah. Yeah, it's a good, uh, um, the Thriller documentary we talked about earlier. It's um pretty cool. Wayman Tisdale, wow, rest in peace. Do I have any Wayman Tisdale? Um, I have a, uh, MP3 of his album. I know I don't own Wayman Tis. He was a what did he play? Basketball or football? But he was a bass player, incredibly talented bass player, Wayman Tisdale. But he died young. Um, don't forget to hit the like. Yeah, we got 171 likes, 57 people watching. Love God and Prince during the Purple Rain time. Wow, you're you're so lucky. Did you meet Prince, or you just have, had happened to find a signature? Chris Dragon also has a great... Oh, he played basketball. Thank you. Power Forward. That was the name of the album, wasn't it? Power Forward. Wayman Tisdale. We had a one to seven target burner. Oh, wow. I, I saw Prince live a couple times. I had front row seats once. That I'll never forget that. I feel like I have a very blessed life in the sense that I... I saw Prince live and I met Michael Jackson. I saw Michael Jackson perform when he was with the Jacksons and with the Jackson 5, but uh, I don't think he ever performed stateside solo, or if he did, it was very expensive. I wasn't really into it. 
How would you handle the type of embarrassing moment that gets you clowned back in your younger days? I was, I was a straight nerd, so I got clowned all the time. You know, how would I handle the situation? I'd probably feel bad about it, be embarrassed, but, you know, um, that's when you learn about um, human nature and how people like to, I'm kind of a loner, you know, um, I have, I, I'm an only child. I grew up with my cousin. I really value friendship, right? So I, you know, if people are not cool with me or they're trying to haze me or something like that, then they, they tend not to stay being my friend, you know? So, but, um, you know, talking about being bullied and stuff, I got bullied a lot. You know, not as, not as bad as Chris Rock, but, you know, I definitely, definitely had my fair share of bullies. And then the funny thing about it is, you know, people forget that they bullied you. They, you know, they, and then somebody told me I was a bully to them. So I had to apologize. I don't even remember it, you know. Hack the planet. Yeah, I'm a little bit above before Revenge of the Nerds, you know. He was in a tour bus and a group of us were walking by and he came out and talked to us and signed autographs. So you must have been really young. It was the TSU College campus for a concert for special needs. And my uncle worked there. So this is Purple Rain time. So he was... Well, the fact that he spoke to anybody is kind of... Um, bullies build you. Well, you could say that that's before automatic weapons. Now people... It's dangerous to bully somebody now. But yeah... Um, I consider, I don't want to say anything bad, but I, I, I think the issue I have now with some of the that I teach, they've never been challenged by anything. Their systems have always been approved. And, um, you know, what, what it takes to get through life, it, you know, I think you do need some adversity, um, from time to time, if things are always easy and people always agree with you, then when you do get challenged, um, you fold. So I don't, I don't think it's good. Um, I've given you an example earlier. Okay, I, I can't scroll back that far. Hey, Mike287, first time here. We're just hanging out. Almost, almost got to go. Um, adversity builds character. I, I don't think people should be bullying one another, but I do think that um, when you learn to hit back, it it strengthens you. You know, you either verbally or physically, when you learn to fight back, it, it's, it strengthens you. And I miss movies like My Bodyguard that taught you those lessons. You know, now everything is so... You know, easy. We all believe somewhere back in the day, even if you laughed at bullying, bullying can build character, but it should not ever be done. I agree totally with you, Voyeur. Bullying also hurts some kids for life. Well, you got to learn how to fight back. There's an example so there, somebody stumbles upon you and, and your other at a wrong time at some secluded area. Hmm. Well, and they don't rob you? They just want to bully you? I don't know. See, I never took karate or kung fu or any of that crap. Over the Edge, that was a good movie, too. I remember that. I, I haven't seen it in forever. Um, Nerd and Geek no longer called. You see the thugs think they're brilliant. High tech with YouTube pages. Yeah. My bodyguard. Yeah. I went too far with my example. I just don't know the, I, I'm not grasping it. That's all simply deep. Uh, live and learn, salute. Mention not folding. There should at least be knowing and cleaning and raising animals I eat. I agree, Agoff. I mean, I don't necessarily want to kill an animal though. So, but I know, I mean, I've read books like Fast Food Nation 
years ago, I read Fast Food Nation and naturally got me stopping eating this stuff. Oh, there goes the light. Um, that sure got me stopping eating this stuff and I still eat it. So it's a drug. Meat is a meat has drugs in it and I'm addicted to those drugs. I'm I'm really conditioned. I would never eat you, Molly. She would say, What about me? You and your lady were doing something indecent in area other than your house and somebody saw the act. Um I don't know. Well, that's not a question I wanna I can't picture it so simply deep, so I can't answer that. What lesson resonated with you the most while working with Dick Gregory? Um, Dick Gregory got me trusting in the universal God more, like how everything is connected and, you know, connected me to my higher power in a sense. Um, Dick Gregory connected me to the, the spirit and gave me a sense of purpose for for a while. I mean, it's still my sense of purpose. As so though, if my purpose before meeting Dick Gregg was always to share information, Dick Gregory put me on track to try to help empower other people through knowledge. Right. So that's when we changed. Like before. You know, our, our mission statement was to share, you know, good movies about black folks. And then after Dick Gregory, it was um, educate, entertain, enlighten, and empower. So, so yeah. I mean, you know, he changed my life in a lot of good ways. Um, you know, remember Dick Gregory telling the story of Michael Jackson? Yeah, they were very close. I mean, he, he knew how to detox. If you listen to him, you, you could... You definitely would grow as a human being, as a spirit on this earth. Yeah, I, I think, yeah, to answer your question, too often we think of people as the physical that we embody. And Dick Gregory is somebody who can who taught me to be more connected. Another person who taught me that lesson was um, Leon Ware, and I've never really done anything with the material I have on him. But Leon Ware was a songwriter. Um, he passed away maybe eight years ago, nine years ago, I'm guessing. Um, he wrote I Want You album for Marvin Gaye. He produced the I Want You album with Marvin Gaye. And what was interesting about him is the first three years of his life, he couldn't see. He was blinded playing with, I think it was playing with a BB gun or something like that. He lost his eyesight. He had to have his eyes covered um, because they said, well, that's the only way they could possibly heal. So he was, he literally couldn't see for three years. And he went to the same school for the blind that Stevie Wonder did in Michigan, right? And he said through that, he learned not to look at people, but he could see into people's spirit because he didn't have eyesight. When he looked at you, he really looked into you, right? So one of his best known songs is Minnie Ripperton's inside my love, right? And everybody thinks that that's about, um, you know, sex, you know, but, um, you know, will you come inside me, all that other stuff. But he said, no, it's a spiritual thing. It's like you look inside someone, right? And he had the ability to look, really look into people's hearts. And there's a whole belief system around that where, you know, as we as human beings evolved, we have more than one center for intelligence, right? So you have your brain, which most people gravitate to, um, thinking is where all the information comes from. But you also can speak from your heart, and you and then you have your your uh, 
reptilian thing as well, you know, so you, you're, the chakra thing is real, where you vibrate from and where your information, where you send information from. And at a certain point in my life, you know, I, I could really feel vibration here in my third eye and my crown chakra was activated quite a bit, you know, so, and that was around the same time that I met Baba Dick, you know, I could really activate the, these things and you know, so he turned me on to a, a greater sense of being, not just the physical being, but the spiritual realm that we, we go through. Yeah. And Leon, we're another Detroit giant. Yes. You can hear the ingredients of Marvin and Leon, we're 70 albums. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, musical massage is still, I think I have, a, I have my copy of musical, no, musical massage in the closet. But, um, that's his that's his version of I want you and some of the um demos for I want you are on that CD so if you want to listen to Leon Ware I you know all of the 70s and early 80s stuff is great um but you have to he's like beer he's an acquired taste like what's interesting about Leon Ware to me is like you know when I first met him I wasn't accustomed to his vocals, right? So when he was doing his songs, you know, I'm comparing him to Marvin Gaye, which is a big mistake, right? Like very few people sound like Marvin Gaye or sing as good as Marvin Gaye, right? So you, you, on that level, you cannot compare Leon Ware, you know? But as a songwriter, he's, he's way up there um, and you can listen to some of his collaborations from the 70s. He worked with Quincy Jones and he worked with Minnie Rippert and he worked with Marvin Gaye. And he wrote some beautiful music with, um, I forget the woman's name uh, right now at Motown. And then he wrote, he wrote, I want to be where you are for Michael Jackson. So he's somebody who's great. Yeah, Marvin laying down on the couch. I have that here. This is the the director's cut of that movie. Richard Oliver. Remember Marvin Gaye? So this is the full length version of it. Maybe I'll put that on. That might be fun. So you can find you can find it on YouTube now. But um I had it maybe 10 years before it came out so on YouTube. But the the famous footage of Marvin Gaye uh, singing I Want You on the couch in rehearsal comes from, uh, from this documentary. Bundy. Okay, so I think it's about that time. Molly, you good? She's cute. I'll show you. She's knocked out. Molly. Hey, Molly girl. She opened her eye. Yeah, Marvin Gaye. Okay, so what did we learn today? I showed you a, a ton of vinyl that's sitting here and that'll, that'll prompt me to clean up. Molly, Molly sleeps so much. I mean, I, and some some days I wish I was Molly because she she has no cares. Oh, thank you, Voyeur. I'm glad you enjoyed it. I'm you hung out the whole time, so I appreciate you, Ballard. Thanks, thanks. Um, I'm blanking. I can't get to the phone. Thanks, thanks for everybody who donated. Wait, let me not be super rude. Yes. I'm trying to get the phone. I'm waking the cat up. Cat's like, wait a second. You got to see this. She's like, what are you doing? You woke me up, you jerk. I'm trying to find the phone. Oh, it's going to fall on you if I'm not careful. I hear this. We learned you have great and unique taste in music. Stay strong. Have a good night, everybody. See you next time. 
Yeah, Cheryl, thank you for the cash app. It makes a difference. Good night, Mike, Molly, Mods, and chat. First time catching you live. Yeah, we're just hanging out. Thank you, Hope. All right, light burned out. Any final words, Superstar? Yeah, thanks to the Mod Squad. Peace, Welch is great. The Diva, yes. Chris, stay black. Who's still modding? I just want to thank everybody. Superstar, thank you. Al Brown. I really miss you guys. Yeah. This was fun. Pet TikToks get billions in views. I did one pet TikTok. I don't want to pimp out Molly too much. She's good. She's good, though. All right. Oh, and the light pops. All right, superstar. All right. And hoodies are still on sale. It's get, It's still cold. It's still March. Stay white. <laughs> and T-shirts and everything. I, I got to figure out how to get some more stuff into the store. Ain't no stopping us now. Exactly. Yeah, they, they're blocking that song now, too. So I don't even want to play it. Ain't no stopping us now. We know. We know you. All right. Wellington, yes. This is a small world. It's good that we reconnected. All right. I'm going to go. Um, peace and blessings. I love you all. Wait, let me look into the camera. I love you all. And um, next week, I'll come back. Bird chirping, dancing in September. Okay. Oh, wait, could I have made this black and white? Oh, look at this. I could have done that. Isn't that cool? Uh, not probably not Friday, um, maybe Thursday night or um, Saturday like tonight. I'll, I'll jump on. Maybe not as long. This I mean because I you know this is the vinyl collection for the most part. I don't want to repeat myself, but I'll, I'll come up with a topic and we'll have a good time. School's over the middle of May, and then I've got to scramble. I don't know what I'm gonna do uh, to earn. So, you know, it's, it's been fun teaching, but, you know, they, you know, the minute you're done, you, they cut the checks off. So, yeah, exact. well, we, we're not really doing exams as much as um, final projects. So, all right, Chris, it's, it's um, you didn't like that one? Haunt, it's called Haunt. Wait, Molly, you want to see? See yourself? You like the black and white noir? No, just no. <laughs> All right, I'm going to bed. Good hanging out with you guys. Have a good night. Peace and blessings.